taught you how to do this stuff. You are right. I learned it by watching you. The nine most terrifying words in the English language are, I'm from the government and I'm here to help. But guess what? We got a lot to do. Gotta say hi to me. <laughs> we go back a long way. She was 12, I was 30, but anyway. It's a trap. It actually is a trap. It's a trap. It's a trap. Well, uh, hello and uh, welcome to the show. Uh, you will notice that the name of the show is 100% less Kevin because Kevin is not here. So I had to get a, a substitute, Kevin. Um, and and you all know and love him. He's from the chat. He comes and hangs out with us. And he's currently in the chat as well. Uh, and, you know, I was tempted. I was tempted this week to get Addy to come and be uh, a not Kevin as well. So, you know, later on, because I know he can do it because he's been he's been on. He's been, you know, in like stuff before and i saw him this week on a on a different show that's less cool than us but anyway let me let me bring in this this week's not kevin uh for now jason is here jason say hello to the nice people hello how's it going everybody yeah uh, addy's addy's here. Here. people are here you know uh Aller, obviously mallory's here because she was first so her her uh, her little Never fear, I am here. Uh, made it onto the screen. So, and as you can see, as you can see, the, the the hat, the hat made it. This is cool, you know. It's just, it's it's multicolor. It's you know, pretty cool. Throwback hat. Now, I I promise you that you will continue to see ads for this hat or similar hats throughout tonight's show every time we share the screen because i opened articles a while ago and it's still there it did not break the curse i assumed if i purchased the hat that it would break the curse did not it's still they're still there we're i'm gonna have to i'm gonna have to do a bunch of searches for other things yes i, I need to I need to do that, and yes, I need to remove the sticker. But it's brand new right now, so I, I wanted to show it off brand new before I leave it's it flat. I, 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 did this, I did do this pre-show, but I gotta like I gotta you know spritz it and get the belt on it and tighten it down a little bit, you know. But at least it's not completely flat. It's still you know it it's brand new. I gotta work on it. It's you know. Oh, Steve is here. There, Steve. So, so you're in Colorado right now, Kevin, on vacation, hiding out in the mountains or something. Yes, I am. Are, are you? Are yes, you? Are you hiding from like some sort of like mafia coming after you for not, you know, dealing with the bodies in the proper way that they want you to, you know, get rid of? Let's not get that rumor started. Well, I mean, you know that that would be a, an excellent way to make business. You know, to you know. I've seen movies where you know they put two bodies in the coffin, you know, the, hide yeah. the hide the mafia body under the the paying customer's body, you know. Right. Yeah, I, I've seen that. I've seen that before on TV. So I just you know I'm wondering if you know because if you haven't seen, I'm sure you're aware that there's a Sylvester Stallone TV show called The Tulsa King that is yes. that is on. FX or one of those channels where he plays like a New York mobster guy that is now in Tulsa. I haven't watched it yet, banished. but I've seen. He got banished to Tulsa. Uh, is that what it is? So, yeah. you know, I'm sure that there's a lot of, you know, New York ex New York mobster guys just hanging out in Tulsa that, you know, might need to have, you know, things taken care of, you know. Or you yeah, can be like John Wick and collect those gold coins, you know, like in John Wick. Right, yeah. yeah, I would rather do that. But you know, you don't get to pick. You're, you're, uh, I'm you legit. are what you are. I guess. I'm, I'm, I'm looking here, if and see if. Oh, yeah, no, I can't really. I was trying to affect your audio to see if I could increase up. the. 
increase the uh, volume of your audio, but I can't do that. Oh, well. Just get, just lean into the mic. Just get right next to the mic, you know. Yeah, it's my headset. Uh, that's uh, a little bit better. That's eh, fine. I just, I'm just piss, yeah. pissing on you here. Yeah. So, uh, you know, the idea is because I, I did a poll this week on, on the Facebooks, and not very many people respond. There were some, there were some responses. There were some, um, you know, where I said that, you know, since Kevin's not here, we're, you know, maybe we'll have an audience participation portion of the show. And there were there were several people that responded to the the poll that said that they would come on, but the right. thing is, is tell me who they were. So right, I have I have some responses that say yes, uh, I'd come on. Sixty percent of the people that voted said that they would come on, but only five people voted. So you know, <laughs> uh, I guess that means that three people would be would be interested in coming on and i'm really excited because uh charles guard or not charles gardner like chris big yeah, knowledge right chris big knowledge said that he that, that he was he'd think about it but uh oh. you know it, he's always fun to have on but we'll see we'll see we we have we have stuff to fill the time if if that doesn't happen but addy didn't vote I know that Addy didn't vote, and I know that he has the setup that he could participate and come on. Addy's got a good setup, yeah, and hang hang out with us. I know that. So is my mic a little bit better now? It's a little bit better, yeah. Okay, good. okay. yeah. I mean, <laughs> well, Chris is not even in the chat room yet, Addy. Chris, Chris always makes an appearance. Like he'll, you know, he'll he'll say, "Oh, did somebody mention my name?" You know, he he'll right. always. He always does, but anyway, hey, let, let's cover let's cover some stuff first. Let's cover let's some it. stuff. So I, I found an article, and I don't know. I mean, I it's 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 an anti Chinese article, Kevin or not Kevin, Kevin not Kevin, um, which is not my fault, but the name of the website, and I and I'm not sure. Oh, Addy said he would come Let's on. Come okay. On. Yeah. All good. right. So later on, we're, in a little while, we're going to throw the link in there. And if you want to come, if you're ready, then you can come in. It's getting it's pretty late right in now. New York right now. Well, he's always on until the end of the show. You know, he's not, he's not always one of those, you know, old men that like to sneak out. So it, it, it's an anti-Chinese article. I, I'm prefacing this just as, you know, make sure that there's no, uh, you know, allegations made to me that I'm, you know, anti-Chinese because I'm married to an Asian woman. So, you know, I just want that to be clear. But the website that it, that it's being published on is, is called Yellow Hammer, which could be construed, you know, it's an anti-Chinese article on a website called the Yellow Hammer. I, you know, I, I just want to put it out there. I didn't do this on purpose. You know, the website sounds a little bit racist. Yeah, but it's it, it it's in Alabama, so maybe Yellow Hammer means something in that area of Alabama that I don't know about. But anyway, it says Chinese or China fueling disinformation campaigns to prevent regulating illegal vapes. And there's a picture of a person, you know, stock footage with a red Alabama, which is very communist. That's a communist color there, you know. So I don't, I don't know if any of my Bama friends are, are listening, but you know, y'all, y'all should have picked a different color because red is, you know, especially when the first, the first sentence of the story is the Chinese Communist Party, uh, you know, so it says the the Chinese Communist Party's influence is making unexpected inroads in Alabama, particularly through the proliferation of illegal vaping products or vape products that target unsuspecting consumers, including minors. These products, oh, there's an hat ad. These products, mainly originating from China, 
uh, generate profits that are then funneled back into or then funneled into uh, lobbying efforts against regulatory measures. Recent polling data obtained by Yellow Hammer News reveals a significant public desire to clamp down on the illegal vaping market in Alabama. The majority of voters, uh, 55%, were unaware of the widespread availability of illicit disposable vape products in the state, most of which hail from China. So they're saying that you, you understand that reveals a significant public desire to clamp down on the illegal vape market in Alabama. But then over here it says, the majority of voters were unaware of the widespread availability of illicit vape products. So how can this be a, a significant public desire to clamp down on something that they didn't even know about? Do they not realize that every vape is made in China, except a, a few billet box or 3d I don't printed. Know. I mean, billet, billet boxes is, is, is still alive, but I don't know. I mean, I've recently seen that, you know, Used to be, and I have like seven billet boxes. So used to be you had to be on the website at a specific time and a specific day and cross your fingers and hold your mouth just right to get one. Right. Now they're so uncool or they're so commonplace, they're selling them retail at, I want to say, uh, yeah. Vapor DNA or Element Vapor. It's yeah. Vapor DNA. Yeah. So, yeah, they're, I mean, they're so common now that they're, re I mean, the demand is so low now that I guess that they're available on Vapor DNA now. Or, yeah. yeah. And, you know, but I would never get rid of any of mine. I love my vape box or my billet boxes. Love them. Here's one right here. Yeah, one right here. Dang, my green, yeah. Yeah. my green screen. Look at my green screen. Woo. But, all right. Mm -hmm. Now, you be nice to your wife. She's letting you play with us tonight. Oh, it's all good. Yeah. Uh, but the CCP's involvement doesn't stop at flooding our markets with these goods. They're actively financing campaigns to thwart legislation aimed at regulating the vaping industry. Evidence suggests that leading lobby groups acting on behalf of Chinese vaping manufacturers are fueling disinformation campaigns to derail bills like HB 65 in Alabama. HB 65 seeks to safeguard consumers' right or consumers against unregulated, unsafe products, especially those uh, targeting children through appealing packaging and flavors. Packaging and flavors, Kevin, not Kevin. That's packaging that's just, and flavors. Yeah, it's always the packaging and the flavors. The following flavors. the money trail, yeah, following the money trail unveils a disturbing pattern. Illegal vape sales fund lobbying efforts to promote further sales of the CCP-backed disposable devices. Uh-oh. So this next sentence is going to piss me off because I personally know this guy, and he was a very good friend of ours. He sponsored our network when we first started. Right. He no longer sponsors us, but he's still my friend. And, and he gave – hey, Michael Redfern's here – he gave uh, Fig his credit card to pay our bar tab. So, you know, I'm, I'm really good friends. I love John. Anyway, one individual in the midst of this controversy is Matthew Jonathan John Glazer, who has been associated with Chinese vaping manufacturers for nearly a decade and is currently facing RICO charges in a federal complaint filed by the city of New York. One of Glazer's companies is described as a middleman and master distributor for these Chinese based man yeah Chinese based manufacturers in the case of elf bar the top vape choice among middle and high school students exemplifies this alarming trend despite being banned in the US since December elf bar products continue to circulate among minors with profits from these actively impeding legislative efforts to curb the influx of similar Chinese products into Alabama. Now, oh, let's, let's just keep going here. In another court deposition, Glosser told a federal judge that his company sold more than $132 million of the product within a year, saying we are selling it faster than we can get it in. Meanwhile, F -bar, or Elf Bar was dodging U.S. customs to import the products from China and misleading the public about these products, or what they were, and while admitting that they knew that they were getting into the hands of children. How does Elf Bar, a uh, brand, 
manufactured in China, bought and distributed wholesale in the United States from multiple distributors. How do they know anything about what their product is doing in the United States? Because they don't operate here. Just social media, probably. Just tracking social media posts about Elf Bar or EB5000 or whatever trigger words. I, I mean, know. it's it, it's ridiculous. And, and again, so John is a, regu- is, a, is a distributor. He buys product in China, puts it in a warehouse here, offers it for sale here, takes that money and keeps that money himself, doesn't send right. it back to China because he's already bought the product. Mm-hmm. So China is not funding anything. Mm-hmm. China doesn't care about American law. They will sell yeah. whatever anybody here wants to buy. I've said it before. I'll say it again. They're just in the business to make money. Period. So they're not, none of their money is paying a lobbyist here. None of their money is being used. They've already got their money from John. Right. Or other wholesalers. John is a is 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 always been responsible when it comes to advocating. So John takes a portion of the money from the product that he sells. High, you know, in New York, fights legislation in New York, pays his dues to Safada or whatever trade organization he's currently a member of, VTA, whatever. He doesn't send any. China does not send money here. To lobby, period. No, no. Yeah. Now they preso did. Didn't they just say that they're going to start fighting some of the PMTA? Uh, At one point, Vapereso was a member of VTA, right? So they may, you know, they and they're publicly traded now. I think right. right. One of the yeah. One of those giant more, isn't it? It's more, more, yeah. yeah. They're they're publicly traded, so. Yeah, they're they got stockholders in the United States, so sure. Yeah. Well, okay, so the FDA created this vacuum by banning pre-filled pods. China comes in and well, the that FDA. To, I'm not defending the FDA in any way, shape, or form, but it was no, Trump. Not. It was Trump who essentially did that. Yeah. Um, FDA does not legislate. FDA, you know, if they've been given um, very vague rules to, you know, and it's their responsibility to regulate. And I've said this since we started, since this technology was handed over to them to regulate. When you read their original language in their papers and their, you know, releases and stuff, you know they don't understand the technology. They still don't. No, that's what I'm saying. They don't understand this technology. They haven't from day one. They're trying to make, like, tobacco rules fit a technology product. And it just, there's no... There, there, there's no way that you can take agricultural rules, you know, based on a, an agricultural product, right? You know that that's an organic thing that's growing from the ground, and somehow turn that into regulation for a technology product that has batteries right. and you know metal components, and you know, it just doesn't work. They should have started from the ground up, but the PMTA process was already in existence. Before FDA got responsibility for the pro for the, for right. the area, TCA, so TCA they took yeah they took the 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 ATF's stuff because before FDA had regulation of cigarettes, ATF did right alcohol, tobacco, and firearms right yeah so they just took their what the process that was involved there. And, and try to fit a square peg, you know, a round hole into a square peg. It's, you know, right. or a square peg into a round hole. Yeah, right. I, I got it right eventually. But so the whole system has been fucked from the beginning. And they've never wanted to say, you know what? Please educate us. 
about the product that you make so that we can regulate it. If they had did that in 2014, when they originally originally announced their intention to deem, it would have been so much better. If they had just came in with an open dialogue and said, hey, look, we know that everybody in this industry is new. Like the vast majority of people in 2014 that were in the vaping industry had never owned a business, had never worked in a regulatory world where they had to follow regulations. Most of these guys, some of these guys were, you know, ex-felons. I mean, I know quite a few guys in the industry that started vaping when they were in prison to get through whatever, uh, you know, substance abuse problems they had. And vaping helped them get out of that one addiction. They came out and they're like, this is awesome. I want to help people. I want to, I want to turn the page and, you know, other guys, cops, retired cops, uh, you know, all over the, every spectrum. I mean, the guys at five ponds, you know, some of them were in like finance world. Some of them were in, you know, like uh, restaurant or whatever world. Wow. So they come, you know, the guys, that, the guys, uh, Lazarus Vintage, one of their guys was a chef. And that's why they, a lot of their flavors are really, you know, weird. Because the guy that, that, that crafts, crafted their recipes, Bruce, I think his name is Bruce, was a chef. So a lot of culinary sort of inspiration is That's in there. Yeah. You know, you know, uh, RJ from five ponds is a, is a, a wine aficionado, you know? So a lot of their drinks had, or a lot of their stuff early on were like mixed drinks and, you know, uh, Lonnie Bozeman, uh, was just a guy, you know, I think he, oh, he was in cybersecurity. So, so they've got it. They've got it all covered. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, none of these guys had ever run big, huge businesses before, never had to deal with government regulation before. So if I was FDA, if I was the head of the FDA tobacco TCA at the time, Center for Tobacco Products, CTP, I would have said, okay, I want to have an open dialogue with you guys. I'm going to, we're going to have a, a week long period where you guys can come to silver spring maryland we're going to rent a ballroom we're going to allow everybody to have time to ask questions and to answer our questions so that i understand what it is that i'm regulating so build mitch some coin, do that uh, mix, mitch, some, mix some liquids yeah yeah mitch never did that didn't understand that a lot of the guys in the industry in my opinion really overshot their they're building labs and at the time they're like, well, we're going to, we're going to build an ISO 9,000 lab. Why? I mean, they were trying to future proof themselves. Yeah. Is that what they were trying to do? That's going that, I mean, ISO 9,000 is like way beyond what they, I mean, going to, you're going to like sterile. Right. Vacuum, seal, sealed rooms, sterile work environment, operating room situation, biohazard level situation. Lab. Cannabis mixing lab level, not 9,000, but whatever. Right. Yeah. Right. So then when all these men, when they do find out that all these men, a lot of these manufacturers, a lot of guys did open, like go in, build my ISO level 9,000 labs. Now FDA is thinking, well, we need to make that the standard. So the big guys in the open vaping world, I'm not talking about big tobacco, but the big guys in open vaping, they they had $100,000 around to develop a ISO 9000 or even half a million dollars to throw at an ISO. Right. Level. But most of the smaller guys could never have afforded that if that was the standard that they were trying to push for. You know what I'm saying? I mean, right. I I was at Cyclops Vapors Lab in Mobile, Alabama. It's an it's at it, you know, you got your negative uh, pressure vacuum airlock and, you, you know, everybody's in there with like encounter suits and you know, you're just like, Tyvek suits, yeah. is this, is this really, we should have been pushing for, you know, clean. 
which you know, and I'm using a medical term. We're talking about working clean versus sterile versus aseptic. You know. Yeah, but you you yourself said you you found a gnat in one of your like a bug in one of your liquid bottles. I have seen Not that so before. Good. Yes. Not frequently, so, but I have seen it before. Right. So that's what you combat. You just combat contamination. And that was, and I'm not going to name the brand, but it is a very large brand. Mm. Like worldwide brand. Mm. So, yeah. yeah. And Addy's throwing a link to AmericanCleanRooms.com yeah. with a list of the different classifications. But yeah. So that, I mean, this hit piece, A, attacking John, it, you know, pisses me off to no end. Like, he's an American business guy, and somehow they're saying that he's a puppet for the CCP. This is not how the, China, like, if I said to China right now, I want you to make X, Y, or Z, they're going to go, how much money do you have? Because there's going to be right. three quality levels in X, Y, and Z. There's going to be a cheap version, a medium version, and a premium version. In Chinese manufacturing, which which level of quality do you want? And this is how much how many do cost. you want? Yeah, right. Yeah, what you know? What is it that we're making? This is our MOQ. These are our three levels. Here's the estimate. Which one do you want? And where's my money? That's all they're going to ask. And this is how much it's going to cost to ship at the end of manufacturing. We have to retool. So here's our retooling fee. Blah blah blah. They're they're gonna hit you with that. You're gonna know what these. They're all they're all they're caring about is how much money are you going to send us, right? And then we will make it and we will send it to you. Once it's on the ship, it's not our shit. Yep. They don't care about lobbying Congress. They can't sell these products in China. The products that they sell everywhere else in the world, that they're allowed to manufacture in China, but they're not allowed to sell in China. Right. Or use them. Right. Or you well, I mean, other than you see the picture, there's video, YouTube yeah. video yeah. of the Chinese manufacturers. Yeah. You know, they're they're you know sucking on the the pre-filled uh but whatever bars that, that they're showing in that video. I'm like, I'm glad I make my own shit. So this week I'm I'm vaping Burly Monkey RY4. See, it's a Burly Monkey RY4. This is an RY4 too. Is it white? Why is it? Uh, it's in a white bottle. Okay, I thought it looked really cloudy for a minute there. I was like, ooh. Yeah, it's my filter. That. Yeah. It's just uh, RY4. Uh, I don't remember which version of an RY4. And, it's and just, Addy's uh, over there going, why would you put a burly tobacco and an RY4 tobacco in together? It's good. I'm happy with it. You know, Screw you, Addy. <laughs> Yeah, I'm just manufacturing what Addy is saying in my head. So I got another article here from Ireland. It said it says something went wrong. Let me let me. Let I just me went to me. an Irish pub. I just had uh, Kilkenny. Oh. In an Irish pub. Yeah. I know. I I have it in another place. I have it in another place. I just sent Kevin, the real Kevin, uh, an instant message with the word fuck like that. Just really long. <laughs> um, because I didn't, I wanted him to see the, the tweet that will be our tweet of the week. Uh, uh, but I, I don't want to tell anybody what it is yet. Okay. Anywho, here, let's see. It says here, one in five vapors would return to the smoking habit if flavors are banned. I read this. Survey says. That looks like me. That's my upper lip right there. When my, uh, Except I've never vaped the, that, whatever that is. And this guy's wearing used. like a fingerless gloves. I, you know, More than 75% uh, percent of vapors say a ban of flavoring could lead to more young people smoking with one in five ex-smokers saying that they would also pick the habit back up if flavors were banned. Uh, it has been an offense to sell nicotine inhaling product to someone under the age of 18 since December. So you're telling, now this is Ireland. This is my people. 
um, they they didn't pass a, a tobacco 18 until last December with government plans for a restriction on the use of flavoring set to follow. Now, I got into an argument with an asshole, an anti-vaping advocate one time. Mm -hmm. It's been about two years ago. Um, and I had said that the last time I was in Ireland was after the smoking ban had been in place. And every pub that I went to in Ireland, people were still smoking like fucking chimneys. And nobody was doing anything about it because it's Ireland. We don't give a fuck what you say. So anyway, um, a new survey from Red Sea Research and Marketing says 90% of vapors surveyed believe an overall ban could lead to a black market for flavored vapes. Oh, really? Uh, does that surprise you, Kevin, not Kevin, or Addy? No. No. Or Michael or Mallory or anybody? That an illegal a, a ban a ban on something that people like could lead to a black market? No, really? Yeah. So anyway, it was commissioned by Respect Vapors, a group representing those who used vaping to give up smoking. Um, almost, almost half said that they would source flavors from outside Ireland if it uh, was introduced, with 71% believing smokers would be less inclined to take up vaping to quit. An overwhelming majority of those who use rechargeable vapes, which are used by more than half of all vapors, say flavors help them stop smoking cigarettes entirely. One in five of the... Where's that hat? I thought it said crawfish for a second there. It says Crawford. Anyway, Crawford. one in five of those... I want a crawfish hat now. One, of... <laughs> one in five of those who vape said that they would return to smoking the flavored vapes for banned, except they spelled banned banned. You see that? B-A-N-D? Yeah, B-A-N-D. And not B-A-N-N-E-D. I mean, I don't want to make fun of my Irish friends, but come on now. Well, almost two-thirds of smoke said they would smoke cigarettes more often. Uh, some 37% believe there should be a ban on those specifically attractive to younger people, including beverage and energy drink style flavors, candy flavors, or dessert flavors. Why are you throwing this under the bus, 37%? He's at 37%. Assholes. 98% of ex-smokers polled said vaping helped them quit, while 85% said that they helped reduce them the amount of, uh, helped them reduce the amount they smoked. One vapor, Michael Dwyer, who quit his 30-year smoking habit with flavored vapes, claimed it is misguided to believe that young people who vape are more likely to smoke in their teen years and believe the restriction on selling e-cigarettes to under 18s will be more effective than a flavor ban. It would be wrong of the government and the EU to ban flavors because of its misguided belief that they are a gateway to teen smoking. Because it is a vis it's very misguided. Uh, the new restrictions preventing the sale of vapes to under 18s will be more effective than a ban on flavored vapes. Stakeholders need to focus on how we encourage more people to quit tobacco. Uh, Mr. Dwyer said it makes sense to ensure that flavored vape continues when the research shows more people quit smoking using vapes compared to nicotine replacement therapies like gums and lozenges. Mallory says it's a hundred percent shocking to believe that, that they don't, that, that a black market will arrive if they, if they ban people's choices. Hey Mallory, if you've got some gears to grind, you've got a spot tonight to come on the show. Yeah. So speaking of, here I'm going to I'm going to go ahead and I'm pacing I'm currently pacing the StreamYard link. Now y'all don't elbow and knock each other down to get in here first, but one at a time or whatever, if you get in and sit in the back room for a minute, we'll get you in. And you can work you can do it from your phone too. Yes. Just uh make sure the volume's not really high because it'll reverberate in my ears and then I get grumpy. I get grumpy. It's hard to believe that I get grumpy, right? No. Yeah. It's Not hard, hard to believe. believe. It's very hard to believe. Shut up over there. You stick to my narrative. <laughs> don't don't have an don't have an opinion of your own. Come on now. Oh. Oh, Addie's here. Addy's already binked in my ear. I'm, I'm waiting for this article to load, but let's bring Addy in now. In my ear. 
There's old Addy turning the volume down. Addy. I heard myself. I'm waiting for this article <laughs> to load. But let's bring Addy in now. He's got his YouTube there's channel. A, there, there's a good bit of lag going on there. What's up, guys? What's, go, what's going on, young man? Oh, I just, I just Addy. had to pause the video so we don't get any uh, reverb going. Oh, go, doing good. Busy day. Snowing like hell here. Snowing? Yeah. It was 88 degrees here today. <laughs> Not here today. It was 28. <laughs> I talked to my mom. On, she lives in Pennsylvania. She lives in uh, South Central Pennsylvania. I talked to her right, be right before dinner tonight because it was her birthday. This is how bad of a child I am. It was her birthday two days ago, and I forgot. And I, oh, my wife is in the middle of studying. She's, you know, going to school. She's studying. And she said, what's today? And I said, the 22nd. She goes, it was your mom's birthday two days ago. And I was like, oh, I better call her. Yeah. Oh, damn. How do you explain that one, Patrick? <laughs> she she did the same thing to me last year on my birthday, so I don't feel too bad. All right. Well, I guess that takes it away. Then you got lucky with that one. But... Uh, yeah, she didn't remember that she forgot my birthday, but I was like, Mom, you 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 did the same thing to me on my birthday last year. You called me two days later or three days later, and then you apologized because you should know where you were tw uh, 52 years ago because you were the one pushing, you know. How old's mom? 77. Oh, God bless she's her. Almost, she's almost your age. <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing pretty good at 64 so far. Jason, it's good to hang out with you. Yes, sir, Eddie. I I, mm. I I saw that you were on that other show that Paul yeah. uh Sample that box. Paul goes on all the time. I, they only invited me on one time and I pissed all over their single uh single issue voter uh ridiculousness and they, they never asked me to come back on again because by the time I was done, they all agreed that it was nonsense. <laughs> they uh they, uh, I talked to John and, and asked him a bunch of questions. I wanted to know how we get involved with Zamplebox because now every Wednesday they do a great uh, advocacy-based live show. I didn't even know that Zamplebox still existed. Yeah, they don't. Well, they don't in North America. I think it's. I think they still have a business outside, of, you know, Americas. Uh... But you know, they got Allison Bogner and uh, you know a bunch of people that come on every week, and they do a great advocacy show. Yeah. yeah, maybe maybe I'll you know I'll maybe I'll give them a chance, but yeah, you I don't, <laughs> I don't really I don't I don't really I don't really watch anybody else's stuff. I don't want to steal anybody else's um, <laughs> content, you know. And all of my show, at least the first half of my show, is is all advocacy based stuff. So, you know, I don't want to cover something that they've already covered. You know, if they've done a good job and covered it, then I don't want to cover the same stuff that they do. Well, it's so, great you, know, you know, Allison's so involved in with uh, AVM. So they're, you know, they're always pretty, pretty much up to date with talking about what's going on. Well, and, and you know, I don't, I, I, I think I'm on their do not communicate list for AVM. Because I, I asked, I asked questions and. And they, you know, they kicked me out of their PMTA sharing group because I asked, I asked questions they didn't want answers to. So, you know, so I'm just like, so James, you're going to, you're going to get Patrick a little jealous there drinking that whiskey. Is that fireball? Yes. Fireball. Uh, I, yeah. I would not, I would not get jealous of that. If I'm going to drink whiskey, yeah. I'm going to get whistle pig down. I'm not going to, I'm not going to drink some like $10 vacation. a bottle of shit. I'm going to, I'm going to go for the $190 bottle of shit over there. I'm on vacation. Oh, that would be yeah. cool to have Chris to get Chris in here. I haven't seen him in a long time. Big knowledge. Yeah. And he said that he he said that he you know he he said something, and I said, "Do it! I'll I'll you know I promised everybody five to ten minutes. I'll give you twelve minutes if you come on." <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. On the top. It's oh, on the top. by the I way, today. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, Sunday evening, uh, we're going to do a special show with Colin Mendelson. Oh, awesome. Um, That's awesome. Because I, you know, I, I, I sent him a, a Twitter message the other day. Uh, oh, it's been a week, over a week ago now. Um, and I said, Hey, now that you've, you've announced your unretirement, <laughs> which I predicted was going to happen. 
I said, now's the time to come on the show and we talk about Australia. And then he said, oh, did you see about the story about the, the kid that got arrested? And, or, and I'm like, yeah, we we tore that apart the week before. But, you know, we'll, we'll talk about it again. You know, Heck, yeah. What, what time is the show going to be, Patrick? Uh, nine, I think it'll be the normal time that, would, you know, that, that we always are. Well, 10 p.m. your time Sunday yep. morning. And it probably won't be a four-hour show. It'll be like an hour long. With, with well, I'm he's not gonna ask he doesn't have the stamina I used to. Not like you. I'm not going to ask Colin to, to give me it <laughs> because it's it's his Monday, so he's not available on Saturday, which is now in Australia. Saturday, Saturday, he's got. I mean, Saturday. no, we think we have a bad here, but it's. I mean, the Australian government's ridiculous. Oh my god, bad. Well, yeah, yeah. Speaking of here, since I already got it loaded, I'll we'll, we'll go over this while you're on the screen. Okay. It says labor's crackdown, an idiotic piece of public health policy that exposes double standards in its approach to tackling addiction. This is from skynews.com. Uh, Australia. Um, the extraordinary move. To, uh, look at these hat ads. Still, you know, I I I bought the hat. <laughs> I really thought that the hat ads would disappear, but you know, here they are. I'm gonna get. I'm gonna demand that New Era sponsor me. Like, really, they get as much screen time as anybody else does on this show now. So anyway, <laughs> the extraordinary move to ban the sale of non-prescribed vapes, but not to do the same for cigarettes, shows the federal government is more interested in making as much money as possible from addicts than actually improving public health. Writes Caleb Bond. He's a columnist. Uh, I don't think that this, I don't think that this is, yeah. Anyway, remember the great success of alcohol prohibition in the United States? The year was 1920. Alcohol consumption and production stopped overnight. Never again did a drop of grog pass the lips of a yank. Oh, hang on, that didn't happen at all. Booze buying continued unabated and they created a whole new black market to line pockets of organized street gangs. Really? Al Capone, baby. Who could ever have predicted an outcome, such an outcome? Yet the Albanese government somehow thinks it will work with vaping. Health Minister Mark Butler introduced plans for the most punitive anti-vaping mm. laws in the world during the week, which would ban all e-cigarettes not prescribed by doctors and sold through pharmacies. Their flavors would be restricted to mint, menthol, and tobacco, and those manufacturing are selling non-therapeutic... See, this whole non-therapeutic vapes thing just really drives me crazy. Would face up to seven years in the clink. Seven <laughs> years for selling uh, a jewel or, a, you know, a candy bar. What are they? What the fuck are they called? The the, the elf, elf bar. bar. The, yeah. That's yeah, they crank the fines up too now. Yeah. Here we have a nicotine product d demonstrably safer than tobacco, and the government responds by treating it as though it were heroin. No, actually, the heroin dealer probably wouldn't get seven years. Uh, it's hard to think a more idiotic piece of public health policy in the past decade if you exclude the response to that thing that I cannot say on this channel. Of course, I, I can say it. <laughs> you'll get me. You'll get my channel bursted, busted, black, black, whatever. Mister Butler claims the only groups who want to regulate and sell vaping products are those who profit once kids get hooked on nicotine, big tobacco, and tobacco retailers. Big Tobacco doesn't sell any of that shit. What the, you know, anyway, not to defend, you know, everybody thinks that I'm like a big tobacco apologist, Addy. Uh, uh, I'm just a, I'm just a, a logical thinker. You know, I'm, I'm telling you now, Big Tobacco doesn't give a flying fuck about the open vaping market. They don't care. They're not going to spend money to kill it. They're not going to spend money to, and, you know, now, if, for example, they can get a monopoly, they may push for an FDA, uh, you know, registry bill that's targeting everybody but them, not specifically just the open market, everybody but them. And they, I mean, they've done that and they've been quite successful. It's, it's, it's happening in a lot of states now. You know, it, it, just, it makes me sick that all this, all these NGOs, you know, and all these health groups and FDA tobacco themselves, all they're doing, everything they do is protect cigarette sales. Yeah. yeah. Well, what do you think they get their money, man? I know. It. I mean, 
the entire funding for FDA CTP comes from user fees of sales, cigarette yep. sales. Yep. So, so between so, big tobacco and big pharma, it funds the whole FDA. Now, if they really wanted to just destroy vaping and, and get rid of vaping in general, they would push a bill, a piece of legislation that built a a parity, a, an equal system to introduce user fees to the vaping industry, and it would have and and it would be on par. It would ex be expected to be on par, the same cost that big tobacco pays for their user fees. Well, that's, you can see the start of that. And already. that would immediately destroy everybody. Like that would crush every American vaping company in I one stop. One fell from Brian King um, about a week ago, but they just ask um, H H H H H H H S uh -huh. for $9 million, another $9 million for the budget for next year. Well, I mean, they, I don't know if they, the last I checked, and this has been a year ago or so, CTP only had about a thousand employees. If they have a thousand employees and they have how many millions of applications that they have to sift through. And this is the argument. This is one of the things that I said that pissed people off. And Addy, Kevin, not Kevin. I was 100% accurate when I predicted that this would happen. This is the thing that got me kicked out of the the, the PMTA uh, sharing group. The, there's a screenshot somewhere. I'd have to go dig it up. But I got into a I, – I, I stated in that group, FDA is going to find one flaw that they're pretty sure is going to be in every PMTA. And they're going to build a software bot yep, and do an it. individual keyword search to verify that that flaw exists in everybody else's PMTAs, and they are going to block everything. Now, a certain member of the Legion who happens to have started a business where he was helping people process PMTAs, a guy who I'm pretty sure didn't finish high school started a business that actual regulatory attorneys had to go to college for to learn how to deal with FDA regulation, opens a business claiming that he can help get your, your PMTA through, told me I didn't know what the fuck I was talking about. And Dimitri's like, he's right. And guess what? Six months, eight months later, everybody's PMTAs got rejected. Because that's, I mean, that's the only way for a thousand employees to process millions of applications. You know, they, and they did some fine work getting those millions of applications and, you know, under the, under the gun like that. Well, I mean, they only, I mean, nobody actually, nobody that, as far as I know, let me, let me, let me, I'll, I'll limit it to, as far as I know, nobody that submitted a PMTA submitted a complete PMTA from the open vaping part because right, none right. of them, none of them had the science done right, well, they by the initial the deadline. Yeah. They changed the goalposts. Well, I mean, when Fig was on the show years and years and way back when year two years before the deadline i said everybody needs to now start doing submitting their their lab their product for lab testing now because there is going to be a massive bottleneck at the labs because at the time and i don't even know right now at the time there were only like four labs in the united states that could actually do the work but nobody nobody submitted their stuff early because they said, well, we don't know what to test for. I said, every, all you need to do is go to the FDA's website. It, you can, if you have to submit an, a request, you want to see the last cigarette PMTA that was approved. Look at the science that was involved, was 
what chemist what they were actually testing for and use that as a guideline to list for the substances that you're going to test for and the list is almost identical the the actual finally released list is almost identical i like the new name colorado kevin <laughs> yeah yeah well, he's, he, you know, he sent me a picture. He was standing in the parking lot of dispensary, and I said, "Get me some takeout." And he didn't. He wouldn't even get me takeout. I was. Really <laughs> it uh. What, so what's Kevin up to tonight? He didn't tell me. He just said he wasn't available. All right, I got. Well, it. What he said was, "I may not be available. I'll let you know by Thursday." Well, then Wednesday he texted me said, "I one hundred percent will not be available." So he's got a, a hot date with the wifey somewhere. He well, he's driving somewhere. Whether there's a, a family wedding or something that he had to, you know, he had to be away for. But you know, if it was a wedding, I think he would know a hundred percent last week that he wasn't going to be here. But you know, whatever. Yeah. So okay, uh, let's continue with this Australian nonsense. It says here, which begs the question, if the government is so concerned about the health of nicotine users, why does it not extend this authority to ban tobacco and force smokers to seek a vape prescription from their doctors? The answer, of course, is that the government makes increasing increasing sums of money out of tobacco excise, despite smoking rates falling. Yes, because as smoking rates go down, they just increase the tax to you know supplement the fewer number of cigarettes sold. And it's just as addicted to the cash as smokers are to the durries. Dur whatever yep. that is. Durries. $16 billion a year. Mm -hmm. Mr. Butler would seemingly prefer people take up smoking than vaping. And with vapes being hard to obtain, they will. Three cheers for public health. Anti-smoking policy has never been truly about health. It's always been about the government extracting as much money from addicts as possible. I actually wrote a blog, which I have showed multiple times on this show, over 10 years ago now called addicts and junkies talking ex you know expressly why america not australia america is addicted to tobacco tax money tobacco is the first cash crop that actually took america's operating ba budget into the black well there's no no doubt about it that tobacco helped build this country yes tobacco and whiskey <laughs> Two of my favorite things. Yeah. Rather than making a uh, taking on a more difficult cat task of regulating vapes in the same way as cigarettes, which would provide not just a better public health outcome, but a better crime outcome, uh, it has taken the easier road of banning them and hectoring anyone, everyone into smoking instead. The penalties for selling vapes uh, will be harsher than those for selling illegal tobacco that carries a maximum sentence of five years. So if you sell illegal cigarettes, in Australia, you only get five years. You sell that fucking elf bar, though, you're getting seven, buddy. Yep. <laughs> but it Terrible. hasn't stopped the uh, explosion of illicit tobacco. Walk into almost uh, any convenience store, ask for Chop Chop, and they'll have it under the counter. Chop Chop. Chop Chop. What, what, what is Chop Chop? It's loosely uh, already pre-cut tobacco that you can roll in the oh, cigarettes. Oh, roll your own. Okay. All right. Yeah. Where's Bruni? I need Bruni. He's got the he's got all the Aussie slang. I need I need I need my Australian contingent here. Um, illicit tobacco makes up about a fifth of all consumption in Australia, according to the KPMG. The border force intercepted forty five percent more illicit tobacco in twenty twenty one alone compared to the year before. Crime gangs, particularly in Melbourne, those damn uh, Aussie uh, uh, what's <laughs> cartel guys. The yes. Bogans are now oh, running Bogan. an earn or burn scheme whereby uh, they force tobacconists and convenience stores to sell their illegal cigarettes under the threat of firebombing if they don't accept the offer. Now, that's pretty serious. You don't want your convenience store burnt to the ground because you uh, got in a fight with a guy with a you know mullet. That, that's yeah. not right. <laughs> Damn penal colony people. Yeah, fucking <clears throat> criminals. The blame for this growing black market, which funds murder, drug importation, and forced sexual slavery. Wow. This sounds like South Texas. Lies squarely on the feet of the federal government. 
Duties collected from tobacco increased from 43.7% between 2015 and 2016 and 2021 and 20, 2020 and 2021 at the same time as overall tobacco consumption declined by 30. So the tax boon is continuing to go. They got a 43% increase, even though there was a 34% decline in tobacco users because the, they just increased the tax. That's crazy. Right. Smokers unwilling to pay these extortionate taxes have resorted to a legal product. This proposed vape ban will do exactly the same thing. Importation and sales won't stop, but all the money will flow into organized crime gangs. If I were a bikey, I don't know what that means. I'd be a, a writer <laughs> writing a letter. Uh, it says bikey, B-I-K-I-E. Yeah, I'd be yeah, writing a letter to over there instead of biker, like a bike gang. Oh, oh. so if you're like a hell's angel. Yeah. Yep. Uh, yeah. So his legislation is guaranteed a boost to their grubby profits. And that that article had just the right amount of sarcasm to make it pretty cool. Yeah, I agree. Hey, you know, I don't have a finger, but I do have a pointer. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> you you got to point it at the center of the camera. Oh, there you go. Now the people really see the length of your stick. <laughs> Yeah, we, that's good. We showing your long stick to people. I'm kind so, of. I'm. My wife usually goes to bed by now. I guess she fell asleep on the couch tonight. That's all right. My wife is my my wife is not only is she in school to get her nurse practitioner, so she's taking college classes, but she's this week uh, or not next week her wound care certification. So she's a certified wound care specialist. Every five years, you have to renew that. So she has 60 hours of continuing education classes to renew her license. And she's down to the last 20. So, so she's in there different. right now. She has 21 hour long videos to watch and then take a test. Oh, man. Well, that'll be handy when you're working in the workshop and have a little accident. You just go. You know, have her keep a suture kit handy. Oh, and both of I'm our, both of us are wound care certified already. Um, <laughs> so I, I wouldn't stitch myself. But see, the problem I is know. she fell and and scabbed up her knees at church like two years ago, and they were pretty man, they were pretty bad. And since both of us are wound care certified specialists, we argued about what treatment <laughs> would be best. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it's not always it's not always good to have an expertise that you share expertise because I'm like no this is what you need to put on it and she said no this is and I said I'm the one ordering the supplies so I'm going to order what you want to put on it right? what I want to put on it what the heck is that doing stuff they have now it's like a yellow gauze that actually um, starts growing uh, it promotes the growth of skin over a really well, there's there are multiple dressings that you that have collagen impregnated into the uh, into the bandage. So there's multiple. There's different ones. So you you've got calcium alginate with with collagen. You've got these little stop sign shaped octagonal pieces called prisma, uh, and you you know you cut it to the shape of the wound and put it in the the wound bed with some hydrogel so that it adheres and dissolves. All sorts of really cool stuff. That's um, pretty cool. I got myself yeah. pretty good uh, last summer, and they had to use some of that stuff on me because they didn't know what else to do. <laughs> well, when I did wound care in the hospital, I was I had a, a whole cart full of wound care supplies because we would do I would do all the you know wound care in the hospitals, and um, I had little vials of pure collagen, it, collagen powder, and um, it not. It's bovine collagen. It comes from a cow. But anyway, $1,500 a vial of this stuff. Wow. And I would have like a whole box of it in my cart. And I'd be like, well, that patient's being discharged. He's not going to need this. And he, I only use like half of his vial. I should just take this home. You know? No, you don't do that. That's against the rules. Just tempted, but didn't. 
I'm tempted. I think now I can order it on Amazon. I can order anything on Amazon. Stuff that I used to have to have a prescription for or a doctor's order for, I can just order right on Amazon now. Amazing. Crazy. You know, I want to be, uh, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to change my name to uh, uh, Bezos. I just want to, you know, since he's moved to Texas now, I, I'm going to, I'm going to claim to be an illegitimate nephew or something. <laughs> I don't think he's not old enough to be my dad. So I'd have to. Creepy Uncle oh. Jesus. <laughs> well, that, that uncle, oh. nobody invites over. <laughs> oh, I'm sure. I'm sure that his family invite him over. I'm sure. Creepy here, here I'm, I'm going to. What are you drinking there, Patrick? Oh, I'm just drinking an Ar Arnold Palmer. Okay, got it. See, so here, look, I'll, I'll, I'll do this. Here, I'll, I'll switch. What is that one? Saint? It's, it's the Saints. That's a cool hat too. Well, it's got a, it's got a green, green underbill. <laughs> it's got a green, it's got a green underbill. I don't know if I'll be able to do that very long. But okay, so we got a piece here from from Reason, which is one of my favorite outlets for for news. Reason, because they're very reasonable and they're very logical. Oh, there's this Chris. says. Yeah, Chris is Chris has been there for a few minutes. Uh, but he only typed, you know, one or two comments and then he may not even be here anymore. You know, it's really sad. But yeah. anyways, this says the solicitor general takes vaping to the Supreme Court. I don't have any confidence in this. But anyway, uh, the Department of Justice is asking the Supreme Court to review the Fifth Circuit's rejection of the FDA's surprise switcheroo. This week, the Office of the Solicitor General filed a petition for Centenori in uh, FDA versus Wages and the White Line Investment LLC asking the Supreme Court to review the U.S. Court of Appeals for the Fifth Circuit and Bank decision, concluding that the FDA's denial of some vaping products, uh, pre-market tobacco applications, was arbitrary and capricious. According to the Solicitor General, Supreme Court review of the Fifth Circuit's decision is warranted because the court relied upon legal theories that have been rejected by other courts of appeal and have reviewed material uh, similar FDA denial orders. Uh, at one level, the uh, federal government's decision to seek Supreme Court review is what one might expect. Uh, there is a circuit split on whether the FDA acted in arbitrary, capricious fashion when it refused to consider certain materials submitted with PMTAs and departed from previous guidance it had given the industry. Most circuits to hear such claims turned them away. The Fifth Circuit Court, along with the Eleventh Circuit, did not. Uh, sir, I, and I always have trouble saying this certiorari uh, would thus be warranted to resolve the split, uh, circuit split and remove any cloud over the FDA's continuing ability to review and deny PMTAs for vaping products. Without Supreme Court review, vaping product manufacturers would have every incentive to seek review of any PMTA denials in the 5th and 11th circuits, and this would undermine the FDA's regulatory authority. Well, they need their regulatory authority uh, questioned because they're stupid. Uh, at another level, I suspect there are some discussion within the Departments of Justice and Health and Human Services as to whether this case provides the best vehicle for, for Supreme Court review of the FDA's regulation of vaping products. The vaping companies in this case may seem like appealing targets, but the re record here includes multiple opinions excoriating the FDA's failure to comply with administrative law norms. For this reason, one might have thought the FDA would have preferred to see the F uh, the Supreme Court accept uh, that word that I can't say in I a case. That is either. <laughs> I, it, it's if I said here for it's certiorari, certiorari. It's 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 uh, intervening and clarifying. If I if I here, let me let me just here while while i'm at it let's just go ahead and do a google search for the definition of that word uh so that we can yeah a writ or order by which higher court reviews a decision of a lower court to clarify and confirm 
Well, thank you. Judicial review. Why don't they just say judicial review? <laughs> right. <laughs> I can say that word. But anyway, in a case in which the FDA prevailed below and without a dissenting opinion. Up until this point, it has been my impression that the FDA has been somewhat strategic in deciding which cases to litigate and where. In particular, the agency has been more than happy to defend PMT denials against relatively small, often regional vaping product manufacturers, while it has strategically avoided going to court against larger players, particularly those with top-notch D.C. appellate representation. Thus, the FDA voluntarily agreed to reconsider its decision to reject PMTAs from Turning Point and Juul, but went to court against smaller liquid or fluid manufacturers of startups. The FDA thus far has been more than willing to approve tobacco flavored vaping products produced by larger companies, often companies with a long history in the tobacco industry, while rejecting PMTAs from just about anybody else. To date, the agency has yet to approve of any product with any flavor profile other than tobacco. Now, again, guys, this is one of those things that they were ordered to prioritize the PMTAs by market share. So they were, they, I mean, they had to review Juul first because Juul had the biggest market share when Juul was in business. Um, a lot of the open manufacturer guys, they, they got lower priority because they're smaller and thus a smaller share of the market. But I've said this a hundred times. They already have, they're on first name relationship basis with the big tobacco representatives that they yeah, deal no with already. So they already have a working relationship with the big tobacco guys. So, of course, they're going to work with those guys more because they already work with those guys. And Addy and Kevin, not Kevin, let's be clear. A lot of people in this industry are extremely unprofessional. Yeah. I mean, there are e-liquid manufacturers out there, FFDA. Now, do you think that a company that has the branding FFDA is going to get a fair shake? Well, that's probably what they, on the ride over, the uh, big tobacco execs are probably saying the same thing. Here we go. Another $8 million to these fuckers. <laughs> but big tobacco, I mean, if I pull up the entire list of the, in, the market last year's entire cigarette market in just the oh, United yeah, States. Dropping, dropping the bucket. You're looking at hundreds of billions of dollars. Okay, so yeah. if they have to pay $8 million, they don't give a flying fuck for $8 million. No. The, the, even the boutique cigar manufacturers, when they fought the FDA, they had representation. They had, I mean, they uh, they put up a a very professional facade. I mean, I know I know quite a few boutique cigar manufacturers. The, the Patels, I know, I've met them multiple times. Um, Pete Wisdom, I, I you know, a lot of guys in the in in, in you know Tatuahi and a lot of boutique cigar guys. I've met. I've gone to you know tastings with them i'm not saying we're buddies or anything but they they can hang loose and you know get drunk and drink a bottle of bourbon and act like crazy people but when they show up they're showing up in 500 dollars suits they've got the best legal attorney you know that's how comes they got the carve outs that they got because yep. they they brought the checkbook they they brought the attorney the the high name attorneys they don't have oh. an attorney that's been disbarred multiple times that has right, right. You know, they oh. got, got arrested, got arrested for uh, posting on social media that he would like to shoot the governor in the head that didn't shoot a crossbow bolt through the neighbor's doorway into their home. <laughs> I mean, this is the guy that that that's that's who we've chosen. Right. You know, that's one of the guys that we've. And Congress knows where to get their cigars from, you know? You fuck up, you move up. 
I'm sure if we had showed up one day and said, we want the best attorney that money can buy, here's a fucking check. Uh And there, there was a point in 2016 guys when there were, there was enough dollars that we could have done that. If people would have fucking brought the checkbook. Yep. I mean, That's the whole thing right I there. know e-liquid manufacturers that were out buying fucking Lambo. You know, yeah. Yeah. And, you know, they, they, this was not a priority to them. Enhancing their life right now in 2016, 2015 was their priority. Yeah. It still is. Well, there, I mean, there are a, a lot fewer e-liquid millionaires out there now than there was in the 15, in, you know, seven years or eight years ago. Yeah. A lot less. Yeah, you know, and the big ones got bought up by Big Tobacco. Well, I don't know. I, I I only know a, I, 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 well, no, I don't want to know what I, I, I know what I know and I'm not going to say what I know, but there right. are quite a few. You're right. Yeah. Some that you like are currently on the market. Oh yeah, that own like you know they got a they got a like capital investment. Uh, don't tell anybody. We're we're gonna be your silent partners. Silent yeah, partners. Yeah, we want everything to be the, exactly the same as it is, except that we're gonna pay you a paycheck now. <laughs> you know that sort of situation. Wow. But anyway. Triton Distribution, the name of the company owned by WNWL, uh, is a mid-sized vaping fluid. Man- man- I don't like fluid. I really don't like it. Anyway, but the case uh, is sure to attract attention from other companies fighting to keep their products in the market. Some of the larger players, including companies that also make cigarettes, may, uh, may be happy to sit on the sidelines. Uh, however, or, or even take the FDA side, particularly if their own products have made it through the FDA's regulatory gauntlet, government prohibition of competing products is a surefire way to maintain market share. What did I say? They're buying a fucking mon- monopoly. So while the Supreme Court does not grant uh, certiori all that often, this would seem like a strong candidate. The circuit split and its ongoing effects on the FDA's ability to administer the PMTA approval process makes eventual Supreme Court review inevitable. If this is the case, the DOJ pushes to tee up the issue. This is likely the case the FDA or the court will accept. So, um, yeah, I don't actually believe that that's going to happen. The last time, uh, two weeks ago, th- not this, not a, a vaping case, but a very similar non-vaping case, the DOJ brought the petition of Centiori, Sortiori or whatever. And the they, no, they, they Supreme Court said, we don't want to play with that right now. Let's uh, send it back to the appellate courts. And that's what they did. So I have they a have funny feeling it. about this whole thing. I, I myself, I'm not, I'm not very confident that they're interested in taking this up. Not in an ele- not in this election year when they already their docket is pretty fucking full already, and they've got like ninety cases of Donald Trump that they're going to have to probably at some point issue some sort of uh, you know opinion on. Um, yeah, I, I I myself don't think that that's going to be a a very popular. And they've already they've already refused to take up cases about vaping already. There was there's like five or six times that they could have intervened and did not you know it's it's like less and less we we get good news you know about about vaping lately well i mean what's the what's the last big good news that we got was the new england journal of medicine uh well on a legal case thing this actual decision was the last good thing that in in a in a court situation Right, right um that one uh was definitely a big deal because this was the first, well, the second time that the arbitrary and capricious language was was issued by a court. Oh, yeah, I definitely agree. So, and arbitrary and capricious is the exact definition of the fatal flaw. Yeah. So, is this, is this just a game of chicken where the FDA is calling everybody's bluff? 
Well, no, when this decision was 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 done, if you don't remember when we talked about it on this show, we read the article and the the FDA spokesperson, the person that they were talking to, said it really doesn't matter. We're gonna do yeah, we're we're not gonna change anything. We're still going to deny these these order the, these PMTAs, yeah. regardless of what the FDA said. And like that same night, there was a story about somebody else refusing to follow the Supreme Court's decision. And there was a huge uproar because that person refused to abide by the, FD, the, the Supreme Court. <clears throat> but 99%, if, if you asked PAVE and said, hey, the, if you said to them, the Supreme Court told the FDA that they have to re-review these PMTAs because they were unfair. Campaign for tobacco-free kids, American Lung, PAVE, every one of the alphabet organizations, the body part orgs, whatever, would be like, good for them. Good for them for standing up for themselves. But... Governor Abbott decides to not follow the Supreme Court when he actually did follow the the letter of their their ruling. Oh my God, he's disobeying the Supreme Court. Joe Biden is told by Congress and then Supreme Court, you can't interfere with student loan debt. This is not you don't have the authority to do this. He writes a couple executive orders for giving student loan debt. He's in obeyance of the Supreme Court. And everybody's like, yay, he stood up to the Supreme Court. Woo. So it's it's okay when certain people refuse to obey the Supreme Court. But then other people refuse to obey the Supreme Court. And Abbott, oh he's my Washington. God. Washington, is that Abbott? No, Abbott's the governor of Texas. Oh, Texas, that's right. He's my governor. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> like Dean Richards. Governor. She was a Democrat. She was not my governor. I like Ann Richards. She was a she was a Texan Democrat, but she was still a Democrat. Yeah. There is a difference. Texas Democrats, they carry AR 15s. So do Oklahoma <laughs> Democrats. <laughs> I'm hoping Chris Garland's going to come in here. I hope he's still out there. Oh, I haven't posted the link in there recently. I should probably post the link in there again so so that he can see it. <clears throat> so so that we can get right, big Patrick. chocolate in here. All right, Patrick Jason, it's been uh, awesome and honored to hang out with you guys. Thanks for having me in for a little bit. Thanks, Addy. All right. It's, yeah, it's good. Hey, 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 hey. If we have to do another veto party like we did for florida you've got to come and participate all right i'll, I'll be here all right, all right. be I'll, good I'll see, you, I'll see you sunday stay out of trouble all right see you guys we'll see you here ah. all right i'm I, i'm slapping the stream yard link in again for for <clears throat> another person that wants to be not kevin not kevin number two Maybe get Zamora in here. I know Jeffrey can come in here. Jeffrey, Jeffrey's been here before. He's got a full setup. Oh, here, this one, this one will piss off anybody in Chicago or Illinois area. Give me a second here. Let me, let me pull this bitch up. All right. So look at this. This says that Illinois could ban. I'm wait. Could ban delivery of vaping products. So Illinois is considering passing a law that would ban mail delivery of vaping products to anyone other than a distributor or retailer. Senate Bill 3098, introduced by Senator Megan uh, Loran Capal. Let me hit that no thanks button. Would amend the prevention of tobacco use by persons under the age of 21 sale and distribution products, blah, 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 act 
to prohibit electronic cigarettes from being purchased by mail through the internet or other remote sale methods. Toasty's here. Uh, Senator nice. Julie Morrison told the Center Square that educators, look at all these fucking ads again for hats, that educators have complained to the Illinois Department of Health and Family Services that they have uh, found e-cigarettes in school property that are designed to look like school supplies such as highlighters and pencil sharpeners. This measure will prohibit tobacco companies from pulling the wool over the eyes of adults whose job it is to keep their children safe. So are you telling me that a kid with a magic marker shaped vape can outsmart an adult that is quite yep. frightening to me morrison uh, was behind last year's legislation that expanded the sale of uh, state's indoor smoking ban to include vaping uh, devices so they're going to they're going to try to ban vape mail in illinois guys now again they already did that yeah. mallory just said in the pact act already do that Yes, kind of. No, you're gonna double ban. No, the PACT Act didn't ban mail delivery of vape products. The PACT Act requires signature upon delivery. Nobody collects the signature. I get stuff in the mail. Right, all but the time it is not a it is not a, a complete ban. I mean, it's still I get a, vaping a, product. A hurdle. Oh, holy shit! Now they're doing pop up hat ads. They're they're like going full out here. I mean. Look at that. This is a pop up. Ad. Look at this is the hat that I was just wearing. See that? It's right here on the advertisement. It's crazy. So, yeah, the PACT Act does not completely ban the, the US mail from delivering vape products or e liquid or anything like that. It just requires an adult signature or no, a mailman who doesn't give a shit. Well, the, even the online stores are. Kind of faking that. I mean, it's like, are you 21 or older? Yes or no? Really? Yeah, but they are actually supposed to do now. And there have been, there are, there are some responsible people that have required me to scan my, the front of my driver's license. Yeah, I've done that to email it to them. Um, some of the bigger, places. and that's not only just to ensure that I'm a 52 year old man, but also for the credit card. Credit card. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, you know, oh, oh, I think I warned you about this article a while ago. Oh, is this the one? This is, this is the one. This is, this is, this is, I'm going to go uh, on a rant about teachers again, just to warn everybody. I'm, I'm going to go, it's going to happen here. And I don't want anybody to think that I'm anti all teachers. But there are certain things that no teacher should be responsible for. And, and, and anyway, yeah, let's just, we'll, we'll do the article here. Let me go ahead and share the screen here. So this is, uh, this is from the Daily Star, which is probably a fucking gossip rag, but it's, this story has circulated through several sites. So anyway, it says here, teacher who had sex with 12 boys after luring them with vapes, turned in by her own mum. So former high school science teacher Jaden Charles was nabbed by officers on Tuesday and charged with grooming and serious assault against a child after a tip-off. Yeah, yeah. Former high school science teacher Jaden Charles was nabbed by officers on Tuesday. A 25-year-old teacher accused with inappropriate relationships with 12 boys and buying them vapes and alcohol is reported to have been turned into cops by her own mom. A, for, a former high school teacher, Char Jaden Charles, was nabbed by officers on Tuesday and charged with grooming and serious assault against a child after... Why is that sentence in this sentence literally saying the same thing? The young teacher who used to work at a Texas a school in Texas was arrested after city marshals uh, looked into reports of students vaping at school. Uh, City Marshal Joe Martinez said the teacher gave vapes to kids over a year and a half ago, even before she started teaching. Uh, Miss Charles has decided to leave her job at the school after the allegations. Marshal Martinez shared Charles uh, allegedly 
uh, had inappropriate contact with two students before she took up employment at the school, as reported by the newspaper. Authorities are still investigating the, the case and hope to talk to, oh my God, this is mine. This is, oh, this is very near me. Not, it's not in the same town, but it's very near me. Um, authorities are still investigating the case and hope to talk uh, to more possible victims. Marshall Martinez says, I think we're going to add up to several more charges. Some parents told the police that they were worried because their kids went off with, went off with a teacher. Uh, Chief Eden Garcia of Alice Police Department said to KIII News, that's my news channel. That's my local news channel. Uh, we do have parents that were concerned and made some calls about their children being with a teacher. We do have video of the teacher with a student at one of the hotels. What? Holy shit. Chris TV reported that that's that's the KR K Triple I and KRS TV are my local TV channels. Reported that five students talked to the police, but there might as be as many as twelve victims. When she was arrested, Charles said she was expecting a baby. Oh dear God! Uh, Charles uh, was brought to the city marshal's office by her mom on Tuesday morning. After that, she went to the Alice Police Department for questions. She was taken to Jim Wales County Jail on Tuesday afternoon. As of Wednesday morning. Her bail was set for $400,000. If Charles pays her bail, she must wear an ankle monitor and stay away from the victims and their families. She can't talk to in, uh, she can't talk to any monitors as this has to check in every month with the adult probation, blah, blah, blah. Wow. Um, mm. I didn't realize that this was so close to home. Shit. I'm trying to find so, the video clip. Uh, my, my question, and I, I might upset some people here with this discussion. So the current, uh, environment, a lot of teachers are fighting, uh, the family essentially for the right to discuss sex based stuff to children that should probably be better left to somebody that's not a teacher. Um, there's a lot of gender politics that are being pushed. There's a lot of, uh, you know, sexual orientation materials that they are pushing to students of inappropriate ages, as far as I'm concerned, I don't think that elementary children should be shouldn't be talking about sex at all, as far as I'm concerned, whether that's heterosex, homosex, fluids. I, I just think that elementary children should not be taught that sort of thing until it's a age appropriate for them. Before it's too late. Now that we know, we already know, I've presented factual evidence on this show, statistics published by the U.S. Department of Education that show that one in 10 children in school are sexually abused by public school teachers. These are the last people. And then we have a teacher that's running through 12 boys. <laughs> running through. terrible these are the, the i mean this is not really a vaping story but that's just the tool the tool that she used to lure them but it's ridiculous to me i'm going off on this rant right now but these are not the people that should be teaching this type of stuff to kids it should be a family thing it should be you know if nothing else if your kid's confused they probably need to see a professional counselor to help them through that struggle. Whatever that struggle is, they need professional help, not this. Right. I just saw this and I was like, motherfucker. I, and I literally just read the headline. I didn't read the whole article. And this this is lit. I actually this is my territory. We see patients. I see patients in this town. I didn't realize it was this close. Holy shit. And this is a UK news site that's reporting an American story. 
Wow. I think a lot of those sites are like a bot network of regurgitation. But this is actually, I know I saw this. It was a different headline and I liked I liked this. Yeah. This headline was more shocking, so I used this head this headline. But it very th this story has been reported on other sites. Yeah. I just like this headline better. Yeah, but this this allowed me to go off on my rant about fucking predator teachers. Yeah, the bastard says she was giving practical demonstrations for sex ed. Her. Are women teachers predators? I know they're predators, but are they held to the same standard that guy teachers that do this? It's somewhat of a double standard? Well, no. I mean, you remember that story of the teacher that had the lady teacher that got pregnant to the male student. Right. And then she was incarcerated. Right. And uh, initially the boy, they she was not allowed to have any contact with the boy or the child. The, the boy's mother took care took the, the you know they adopted the child or whatever right. and then after that court order expired then the boy moved in with the woman right it was like a it was like a back you remember movies of the week it was a you know movie of the week they don't do that anymore but movies of the week ripped from the headlines true based on a true story yeah yeah but yeah hey Michelle get on your phone Click the link up there and join us. Well, and see, the thing is, is boys, boys, I mean, I, I'm i sorry. When I was a teenager, I would not have hit that. No. Uh, not to be ugly, but I was more discerning as a teenager. I would not have hit that. Right. Maybe she got 12 homely boys. I don't know. But I'm just saying, you know, I I actually dated in my own age group when I was in school and did Same. okay. Not too bad. Same. Not, you know, not too prolific, but not, not prolific, you know. Anywho. Hey, I did put, who wants to come in? Nobody wants to come in here seriously. I, 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 you know, Addy, Addy bit would. the bullet and he came in and hung out with us until his wife fell asleep and now he's got to sleep on the couch. Here's the, I'm throwing the link in the chat room again, just in case any of you guys are brave enough to come in. Uh, otherwise we're, we've, we're going to keep going. Uh, oh yeah, this one's stupid. Let's, let's watch this one. It's a video too. And it's got a girl with purple hair. You know, that's, that's always. I'm going to, there's a 14 second Hulu ad, but you have to wait for a second. Yeah. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4. Come on. There we go. Come on. George Stephanopoulos. Good morning, America. This is, this is from Good Morning America. I didn't realize that that was still a thing, but okay. Good morning, America. Looking at e-cigarette use among young people. We're going to talk about one teen who says vaping became a gateway to other drugs. Ariel Reshef here with her story. Good morning, Ariel. Good morning to you, George. Experts say nicotine is an addictive substance and it... Do, do, do you see that they actually have pre-made graphics now? Vape Nation. Nation. They, they paid someone to make that. I could have made that. I should, I should be getting that check. But okay, let's keep going. Negatively impacts the brain and may increase risk oh, of addiction to other substances. 18 year old Elle says that's exactly what happened to her. And now she and her mom are sharing their experience and her road to sobriety. I was definitely addicted. Addict is a word college fresh. I was definitely addicted. Here's Michelle. Hey, Michelle. Hey, guys. How are y'all? We're just, we're, we're watching this stupid ass news piece. Hey, what's going on? About hey. vaping being a gateway gateway to harder drugs. <clears throat> <laughs> let, let, take a listen. Freshman L. Waitman and her mom Andrea took a long time to accept. Everyone says I can stop whenever I want to. Like I just don't want to, and I was guilty of saying that. That doesn't even look like the same child. All right, no. let's go back. Other than all right, now you see this. You, you see this. Right. So and I was guilty. That doesn't even look right. Other than the purple hair and the nose ring, that the facial structure doesn't even look the same. 
No, it doesn't not, not to say. Not to say that, you know, no. I think she and maybe she put on some pounds, but that usually doesn't change the cheekbones and the eye sockets and the chin. Not the not the bony parts, but there's an I guess that really did you know, there's a lot of okay. I'll see of saying that over and over again, but I was a hundred percent. The, that definitely does look like mama, though. The mama and the child do look the same. Percent addicted. Yeah. Today, she says she's three years sober, but recalls during the height of her use, vaping was a top priority. It got to the point where, like, I would start physically, like, shaking or, like, vibing. All right. Not Kevin. Kevin and Michelle. I don't, I don't know what Michelle's experiences are, life lived experiences, but look at the, the, the smoothness and the clarity of this young lady's skin here. Looks like a robot. And it does. There. Yeah, now, I see some similarities. Are well, I'm just talking about the the I mean, obviously she's wearing makeup that she wasn't wearing in this picture, but she has okay. some skin conditions here that usually indicate certain things to me. Right. There are well, there there are certain illicit drugs that affect your skin texture. Mm -hmm. And this does this pockmarked face, the the modeling of the skin, does indicate that there's probably a, something other than vaping going on in this picture. Top priority. It got to the point where like I would start physically like shaking or like vibrating, like, basically be like twitching in class if I wasn't hitting it. More shaking, vibrating, and twitching from vaping. <laughs> <laughs> From not vaping, I should say. Seriously? No. I, mean, no. I mean, I vape relative compare. I don't know what Michelle vapes, and I don't know what you vape, Kevin, not Kevin. But I vape 12 milligram, which a lot of people used to have a fucking heart attack about when I would say I vape 12 milligram. Or 18 milligram. Yeah, I'm vaping 12 milligram right now. A lot of, I mean, back... Two years ago, I couldn't even buy 12 milligram because nobody made it because they were afraid because it's too high. Yeah. Right. But these now, pods, said, great. now everybody's selling 70 milligram. And I say that I've ate 12 and they're like, that's not enough. And I'm like, it, it is for me. <laughs> I can remember when everybody wanted to get to three or, you know, they were arguing with companies, you need to make 1.5 milligram just for me. Hey Michelle, good to see you. Hey, are you, how's it going? And you're in Florida, right? She's in New Orleans, uh -huh. my friend. No, you're in no, Florida. I'm in Florida. Yeah, I was I was raised in in basically New Orleans, but yeah, I'm in Florida. Oh, me too. Yeah. Did you see? Did you, you see my Saints hat? Did you Did you see my Saints hat? Hey, I got a bunch of them. I just don't wear them anymore. <laughs> But yeah, things here in Florida that that's not bad. I mean, it really nothing has changed. Um, yeah. I mean, as far as what we can tell on the streets, um, you can still go anywhere and get whatever you want. You know, I mean, yeah. we have yeah, flash I mean, shops and and all that, a, along with yeah. um, you know, we have pot shops. We have. Uh, uh prescription now, I, places i was clearly told last week that pot was not legal in florida oh it is but you gotta have you gotta have a uh a, a, medical a card green card yeah is what we call them green cards and um that's not the green card that i'm familiar with i, I you know <laughs> probably not you're in texas but <laughs> um it, it, the, the green card is you have to go to a special doctor and basically you go in, you tell him, you know, you got three problems and this helps. And he gives you for 350 bucks, you get a, a green card for six months. And um, then you for go. Every six months, I have to go give $350 to get another card. Right. Wow. And then you have to pay whatever it is that they want that you have a prescription for. But, wow. you know, I, I think. I think it's mostly now I don't have one, but I think it's mostly it's um whatever you want to get, whatever you need. So there is no limit on it as far as I know anyway. Hmm. But um 
it, it's 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 all over the place you know i mean when once you start realizing it 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 really is it's it's every few miles if not every half mile depending on where people are you know I, See, i'm somebody along told me in the chat room last week that i was wrong when i said i thought that they had they had medical marijuana and they said no no you're wrong you're no wrong. you you can get it medical yeah wrong. Now you can't like you know your your general doctor can't give it to you. You've got to go to a special doctor. Well, if I, I'll give him three hundred fifty dollars. Yeah, are some of those even stores if it was health and aid stores. I'm sorry, what? Are some of those are some of those stores are they Delta Eight stores? Like no, I'm talking when I say a pot shop. That's actually what it is. Um, they won't wow. let you in the door period, unless you have a card. I mean, when you can get cannabis, within a feet not... or two and then you have to show your card. Because what I read last week said that it couldn't be that it had to be cannabis, that it couldn't be other yeah. things like gummies and, and THC. Well, now you can get like, we have, I hate to say a name of it, but, um, there is another there's there's plenty of shops around that that sell you know i mean they'll sell a range from cigarettes to vape to uh you know gummies to cbd i mean everything well, yeah cbd's cbd's fair game because it's derived from hemp most of it. right them. but i mean that um, they they pretty much will have anything you want other than actual marijuana yeah 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 yeah, yeah. <laughs> Let's keep going with this. Let's keep going with this uh, vaping caused me to be a heroin addict article here. More than 2.1 million youth currently use e-cigarettes, according to the National Youth Tobacco Survey. The CDC says use of products that contain nicotine in adolescents can harm the parts of the brain that control attention, learning, mood, and impulse control. Now, we've had no we've had people on this show that are phds that are very smart that will say that nicotine improves attention improves mood reduces impulsive behavior but now we've got this quote from cdc without you know it just says source cdc with no science just that this is the source saying that that nicotine damages the part of the brain that controls these things you see the, the the video i have of charlie saying you know you're gonna have these experts come on and say that there's a connection between these health problems and nicotine because people that use nicotine have these problems right so adh that people with adhd that experience nicotine that have tried nicotine find that it helps them so they use it not that it there's no causal relationship they already had the problem and they find something that helps them but these experts air quotes will <laughs> say that it caused the problem it didn't cause well, anything yeah. idiots <laughs> this is a crisis oh. There's Mil Meredith. Yes. And it's a crisis that we have not been able to get a handle on. For Elle, the dangerous reality was vaping was also a gateway. According to the CDC, nicotine use in adolescents may also increase risk for future addiction to other drugs. I like wanted it to lead into more things because. I oh, oh, she wanted it. So obviously we know that kids that have maybe the desire to be you know uh, edgy and to do things that they're not supposed to do to be impulsive to, you know to seek out those experiences experiment that they tend to experiment with other things it's not that nicotine caused the experimentation no that's ridiculous people that kids that are going to binge drink are going to binge drink regardless of whether they, you know, use nicotine kids that are going to eventually seek out more exciting experiences are going to do that. It's not the right. nicotine's fault that, you know, it, it's the poor impulse control. It's the, 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 you know, the desire to, to, to be a rebel, you know, that's kind of built into our culture in general. 
that's what smokers no. are. I mean, realistically. Well, I mean, I didn't smoke to be cool. I smoked because I tried it and I liked it. Right. But and I mean. Come on. Everybody that knows me knows that I'm not cool. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> me with I a cigarette is no more cool than me without a cigarette. I'm just telling you. Well, Same I, asshole. I mean, did somebody just hand you a cigarette or did you seek it out because you oh no my parents both smoked there were cigarettes all over my house like right so at some point i just I reached mean, over was... and took a cigarette when yeah. i was a kid now this is how redneck we are you know my <laughs> parents would buy fireworks and they my dad would be cheap and not buy the lighter sticks you know the, the you punks like this the yeah the punks and he would just light a cigarette and hand me the cigarette and use, I would use the cigarette to start the bottle rockets. Right. And yeah, obviously yeah. I have a lit cigarette in my fucking hand. What do you think I'm going to do with it? I'm going to put it in my mouth. Right. Puff on it. Hey, I've, I've I mean, been there. I've done that. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's how kid, hillbilly we are. I mean, yeah. You know. Well, that's, that's Louisiana too. I mean, you know. But that's, what that's it is. The, the, you know. I, I can remember when I'm like five or six years old setting off bottle rockets and we would mm -hmm. line up bottles and put bottle rockets in the bottles and light them with the cigarette. Because mm -hmm. he wasn't going to let me have his fucking lighter because he'd never get it back. We were no. too cheap for bottles. We just used the ground and hid behind the cars. <laughs> oh, no. I mean, no, now in our teenage years, we would just light them in our hand and throw them yeah. at each other. I mean, you know. Well, then they came out with Roman candles and then it was a... Then, then all was it was all over because we would be standing in the street fucking having bottle rocket wars. Right, right. Kids today would never do that. Everyone else is out smoking. I want to get high and I want to seem cool. It led into weed and. Let me explain something to you, young lady. Purple hair and a nose ring already preclude you from being cool. <laughs> I, I just, you know, I. I not to be ugly, not to be ugly, but I'm going to be ugly. So I can't if get any... purple hair? No, please don't. <laughs> uh, and don't get a nose ring because I will definitely make fun of you if you get a nose ring. <laughs> especially a septum. A pierce. This is a septum piercing. It, it, especially that because as somebody who, uh, you know, my grandparents owned a dairy farm. I know oh. what that ring is for. And that ring you know, yeah. for for a you know, I I would assume a, a strong willed young lady probably would not be appreciate would not appreciate her boyfriend coming up and grabbing that ring and dragging her around because that's what we did to cows. I mean that's the whole point is you grab that fucking thing they will follow you wherever you go. <laughs> hmm. And then it did lead me into smoking cigarettes and then also LSD. I saw her slipping away. I saw some things like, oh, she'd have glassy. No, no. The you know, Addie says her mom is rethinking the five thousand dollars GMA gave her for the interview. She is <laughs> not this I mean, this woman obviously if she's already if she was willing to lead her daughter around, because this is not the only news site that had an interview with this mom and daughter. This was just the one the better video. She's already she she has no shame because where I come from, any troubles within the family would never have been on TV. No, my mama would never have allowed this to happen. Dale S says I used to be the fireworks guy because I always had a lighter in my pocket. Not anymore. Not anymore. I don't either. I don't. I have. I do have one of those wand lighters to light the barbecue grill, but that's the only one I have. And my she wife uses it to light to light candles. She's got scented light, candles everywhere. Light diffused with a hot coil, a vape. You could do that, but then why would you have a, an atomizer floating around with no tank on it? You know, that's what I'm saying. I don't... The eyes or her her speech would start being a little slurry. There are many ways parents can tell if their children have been vaping or have been exposed to nicotine. There could be behavioral symptoms such as irritability agitation, changes in mood and appetite, disrupted sleep. For now, I don't have children. Michelle, have you had children? You, you have? No. Never had. Now, in my experience as a non-parent, 
all of the symptoms that that just guy said, irritability, blah, 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 blah. That's just being a teenager. Right. Right. Yep. I mean, let, let me let me just go here. Let me go back a little bit here. Yeah. But it's an easy go to. Symptoms. Yeah, let's, let's just see here. Such as irritability. That's teenager. Agitation. Teenager. Changes in mood and appetite. Teenager. Appetite disrupted. Teenager. Sleep. For her mother, the hardest part All those are just basic out being how teenager. to navigate the much needed conversations. I Googled a lot. Like, how do you talk to your kids about this? How do you kind of try to preserve your relationship? Because that was important to me too. How do you respond, not react? That's a pretty dog though. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Act. There's yelling, lots of, for sure. Definitely did a whole lot wrong, but... Did you bring out the belt? That's what I need to know. Because if my mama wanted to change my behavior when I was a child or a teenager, the belt would have solved any problem. That that would have been, the mama would have brought that shit out and then she would have been watching over me every second until she thought that I, would, I was not going to sneak out and get another vape or another pack of cigarettes or whatever. I did try to keep the conversation going, keep the communication open and be curious. It wasn't until Elle was caught with cannabis in high school that she entered a mandate. So I have a question now. So the, the whole thing is that this is the dangers of vaping and how vaping and e-cigarettes lead are a gateway to other drugs. Now we are extremely permissive not in Texas, but in other, most other states about cannabis. We were just talking about that. Most places, cannabis is not even considered a hard drug any, or a drug anymore. I mean, a lot of states, it's recreational. You can just buy it anywhere you want. Now, they're making, they're turning this, I mean, the headline leads you to believe that she was doing crystal meth and some, you know, selling her uh -huh. body on the street to buy crystal meth or heroin or whatever. And, it, you know, this is such a horrible thing. But you're talking about a she's she's 19 now. A product that she can legally probably buy in some states. Yep. Stated residential treatment facility to receive the help she says she needed. It was really hard to finally want to be sober. Vaping is just not worth it. It's not worth the side effects. It's not worth it ruining your life. Because it almost ruined my entire... So pot ruined her life, guys. Pot. They, they what? She didn't say what. Well, I mean, I'm assuming that they're, they're, you know, they're arguing that she didn't vape illicit products to begin with, that she started with nicotine and then moved to illicit products. But, you know, she got caught with cannabis on her person. So, and somehow, I mean, I'm sure that there are people in this chat room at least one or two that in their younger days probably smoked a joint uh -huh. and and <laughs> probably wouldn't say that it ruined their life. I did not inhale. Huh. You missed out. You know, I, 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 <laughs> I'm going to tell, I mean, I would have to try this new modern stuff because everybody says this modern stuff kicks your ass. But when I was younger and I, I didn't, I tried it a bunch of times and really didn't get the experience that all my friends got out of it, to tell you the truth. I would rather drink a bottle of booze. Yeah. But this new stuff might be super awesome, powerful. I don't know. But what I would, you know, everybody's telling me, oh, this shit's awesome. This is the, you know, but I'm just really didn't do much for me. I'm going to, yeah. you know. I would much rather, I'm, I am I would definitely, I mean, if there was a, you're going to be addicted to marijuana versus you're going to be a fucking booze drinking, swilling alcoholic, I'm over here on the booze swilling alcoholic line. You know, I don't think he was addicted to marijuana. Psychologically. According to this girl here, it ruined her life. The addiction destroyed her life. No, it was the acid and everything else she was doing. No, I think it was the fucking crystal meth because that skin condition that she had is very crystal meth. Yeah, our future. Yeah.
And communication is key here. Experts say it's important for parents to learn what vaping products look like and what the dangers are, then approach conversations with teens without judgment. Ask them what they know about nicotine and vaping, and if they've ever tried it, and find a way to relay that addiction. So it says that that it can affect your thinking, your sleep, and your mood. Well, if they're saying that it's good, that, that that it causes you not to sleep, I can fucking tell you, I can go to sleep on the drop of a fucking dime. Same. I sit here in the evenings while my wife is studying, watching. I would last night I was watching a, a thing on Netflix, the Three Body Problem. Fell asleep right in the middle of the second episode. <laughs> I'm going to have to go back and start watching again. Oh, I was watching X-Men, the animated TV show from the, the late, the early 90s, too. I was watching that, yeah. To nicotine see. can affect critical thinking, sleep, and mood. The more these kids can see a connection to their everyday life, the more that message will resonate. Rebecca, some very... So, the, the evil devil, what do they call it? The devil's lettuce, the wacky tobacco, the... <laughs> Yeah, the scourge of America's youth. That's just weird. 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 So Michelle, yes. Michelle, what, what? You don't have to show, but what flavor are you vaping currently right now? Um, it's something berry, which is basically a strawberry, but it's mixed with like blueberry or something. I don't remember that the first word, mm -hmm. um, but it comes from. Yeah, I, it, to me, strawberry strawberry is one of those things that doesn't taste right by itself. You have to put it with something like strawberry custard is pretty good. Mixed berries, pretty good. But strawberry and blueberry by itself is not good. Yeah. But you put them together with a raspberry, a little black currant, yeah. then you got something going on right there. That's pretty good. I like to put black currant with all of the fruits. If I'm doing fruits, I throw a little black currant in there. Does it make it sour? It makes it pop a little bit. Gives it a little bit of dimension. I'm um, usually a, a my, baked kind of person, you know. I mean, I like the the the, the sweet stuff. Yeah. But um, this is pretty good. This is really good, I should say. We're good. And 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 Kevin, not Kevin, Colorado Kevin. What what flavor are you vaping right now? You had an RY four. You showed me. What else? Yeah, it's an RY four. Uh, Is it, 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 it? But that's not one that you made because it has a no. Label. It's no, 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 no. Didn't make one. See, I just disposable. I got I got the burly monkey right here. RY four. It's it's a, it's a a, a burly. Pipe RY4 with a tiny, tiny, tiny dash of banana. Can't hmm. even tell it's there. But it, like it, it, adds, it adds a little bit of a, a sweetness. A, a little bit of it. Uh, just a little sweetness. But yeah. Yeah. Uh, only so good, only fruit good by itself is TFA Fuji Apple, according to Dale. And Steve is vaping a coffee flavor, uh, toasty yeah. cannabis with two green hearts. I'm not sure what, you know, why the, the hearts are green, but there he, he's, you know, got cannabis with green hearts. That, that I don't, I don't think you want, uh, you know, gangrene in your heart. That would be really, really bad. Just saying. It'll be a very, you'd be seeing Kevin from Colorado pretty soon. Yeah. <laughs> Boysenberry pipe. To, now that would be quite interesting if you mix that into a bottle and put twelve milligram of nicotine in it, Addy, mm. and send it to. Don't send me that little pissy stuff that you sent me before with like one point five milligram. I can't do shit with that. I'm not smart enough to figure out how much nicotine to put in it. Plus, I don't know how much is there in the bottle, so I don't know volume wise. It was good, milligram. but yeah, I don't know what to add to it. To, to, to put it up to 12 but it was good don't get me wrong but yeah it was it was definitely not I, either send it in zero and tell me how much is there so that I can add the nicotine myself or mix it in 12 and send it to me or send me the recipe so I can buy the flavors because I'm sure 
I don't think I have a boysenberry. Mm, sounds just good. Send me the, just send me the recipe. I'll make it myself. No. I won't sell it. I promise. <laughs> oh, who's in, who's who's in? Do we know anybody in Utah? Do we know any Mormon vapors? Because this one, this story here would be interesting to to any Mormons that we have. It says here, Governor Cox. That is a very inappropriate name, Governor Cox. Uh, signs a bill banning flavored vape products. So uh, Salt Lake City Governor Spencer Cox signed a uh, a bill Wednesday that would ban the sale of flavored vape products in Utah. Senate Bill 61 outlaws the sale of flavored vape or e-cigarette cartridges and disposable devices, specifically targeting flavors such as fruit, candy, dessert, alcoholic beverage, spice, and mint. What is spice flavor? Is that like maybe cinnamon? I don't know. Menthol and tobacco flavors will still be allowed. The ban is set to go in effect, into effect on January 1st of 2025. Uh, State Senator Jen Plum, she's a Democrat from Salt Lake City. Of course she is. The bill sponsor said the legislation was designed to curb the epidemic of teen vaping. Plum, a physician, noted that she's seen the effects of addiction in teenagers firsthand, including seeing young Utahans in the emergency room for nicotine withdrawal. That I call BS on. Yes. Total BS. Absolutely. In a presentation on the Senate floor, she cited data from the CDC uh, that reported the vast majority of teens who start vaping do so with flavored products. And most commonly used flavors among teens are fruit and other sweets, such as uh, bubble gum and pink lemonade. Well, anybody that wants to vape pink lemonade needs to have their head examined in the first place. I'm drinking lemonade, by the way, but I don't want to vape it. Definitely why not. Why not, though? This is pink lemonade. This is pink lemonade. Yeah, why not? I just said <laughs> your heads need to be examined. <laughs> it's like cotton candy flavor. It's fucking sugar. There is no cotton candy flavor. Cotton candy tastes like sugar. I mean, literally, that's what cotton candy is. Spun sugar. Well, see, I, mean, there's I like no, There's lemons, nothing interesting I about... I like sugar. I would... I would... I like drinking lemonade. Well, see, but I can't eat lemons. And I can't eat, like, sure strawberries. And, oh, no, no, no. I can't because it has way too much acid in it. Well, so, you could. You just suffer the consequences. Well, yeah, that's yeah. true, but I don't want to suffer the consequences, but I still like the taste. Now, Rod, can't strawberry lemonade bananas. is not the same thing as pink lemonade. No. Strawberry I lemonade. Bananas. Bananas. B -A -N -A. But I like banana, oh. banana liquids. Banana pudding. Yes. Um, plume room. From the plume room banana. was yes. spectacular. It is still good spectacular that was that was actually a very good liquid yes still I, is. I, you know i well you can't get it anymore or you won't be able to get it yeah, you can yeah you can from peggy not very long yeah right once the supply that she has is gone is gone because that company is no longer doing business in the united states colorado kevin not kevin don't be trying to get gotcha. people in trouble, Kevin, not Kevin. Don't make me point my finger at you. Don't be getting don't be getting my friends in trouble. No, I just have to order it through a different country. Yeah. So there was there was a plan. There was a plan in place. There was a plan that was being joked about and suggested that there would possibly be an offshore website where people could go and order product so that gotcha. the sale occurred in a different locality, you know, and, and, yeah, wink, wink, yeah. and I couldn't, I couldn't come up with the money to, uh, to pay for the server. Cause that costs money. Yep. More money than I just have laying around. 
And the 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 data services part is really expensive. Mm -hmm. So that didn't happen. But that would have been awesome to have sort of a a silk road. <laughs> Ooh. Nice. But yeah, that 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 didn't happen. But you know, maybe one of these days something like that will happen. Anyway. I'll be going to Daytona again soon, so I'll go see Peggy. <sighs> I need to place an order. Actually, I need to place an order. They 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 sell um, the 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 salted the unsalted line. Mm -hmm. I large bottles of the unsalted line. Five hundreds, yeah, yeah, and uh, the uh, the caramel. Oh, is pretty good. The caramel flavor could be a uh, something that I would have here at the desk that I could use. But I don't want to <laughs> buy little tiny bottles. I need a big bottle. Anyway, in a presentation on the Senate floor, she said, oh, I already read that. Um, initially, the bill uh, kept mint as an allowed flavor, but that was later removed in a late session uh, agreement between lawmakers. Speaking to her upper chamber colleagues, Plum said the bill was not designed to put specialty tobacco shops out of business, However, she noted that businesses are going to have to change their models or we will uh, we, or change their models if we take flavors out. Well, there are quite a lot of specialty tobacconists that the vast majority of their businesses is disposable vape products. Mm -hmm. That, yes, will probably hinder the, the their ability to continue to do business the bill encountered pushback while making its way through the legislature for instance uh state senator ted wheeler uh he's a republican from woods cross remarked that teenagers in utah uh, utah also abuse alcohol but there's no push to ban beer or other drinks that might appeal to young people additionally he said the bill would harm the hundreds of spe specialty tobacco shops that have popped up in utah in recent years currently specialty tobacco shops are the only places where flavored vape products can be sold and consumers must be 21 or over. Last month, the protesters gathered at the Capitol Rotunda to stand against the bill. Many were adults who said they enjoy using flavored vape products and some noted that vaping has helped wean them off of damaging cigarettes. Uh, a number of other states have already banned flavored e-cigarettes such as California and New Jersey. Still, hundreds of Unauthorized disposable vape products have flooded the U.S. from China, said the Associated China. Report, uh, the Associated Press. Uh, this has presented a significant challenge for the FDA, which is currently playing whack-a-mole with thousands of illegal products. They haven't done shit about illegal products, boys and girls. Send some warning letters. That really is not them putting much effort into anything. In addition to banning flavored vapes, the bill also outlaws the sale of any vape that is not authorized by federal officials. So it is a registration list as well. Which is the bill that Big Tobacco is sort of pushing because it gives them a monopoly, of course. I want a hat with a gold chain on the top, like this ad here. I really want that. I think that would be cool. Yeah, look. Look at this, this hat right here. You need to reset your. I, I, I need to. I need. I need to delete all my cookies. I think is what I need to do. Right. Reset your uh, advertising identifier. I don't know how to do that. That sounds very technical to me. It's in a browser. Just a browser setting. Settings. I don't see anything that says advertisement. Privacy and security, clear browsing data. I'll add privacy. No, that doesn't change the... Yeah, I just have to get rid of all the cookies. I'll do that mm -hmm. later. I'm not going to do that now. That sounds, sounds like it could cause problems with my computer while I'm doing a show. So you guys will just have to look at more fucking hats. That's all I'm saying. It's all good. Yeah. So, oh... Here's a scientific study that was just released. Let me pull this bitch up. Huh. Na, 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 na. Let me pre-rub it for you guys. Let's get the fluffer in here. All right. What, Kevin? Not Kevin. 
You're over there shaking your head. Why are you shaking your head? Anyway, perceptions of social media harms and potential management strategies. Vaping case study. This was just released on the 21st. Yesterday, brand new study in the BMC, the, the BMC Public Health. There it says, uh, the social media landscape is now ubiquitous in people's everyday lives. Ubiquitous is a very difficult word. Uh, it is a space where culture, politics, economics, and sociological and public health discourses occur. There is mounting evidence that e-cigarette products are being promoted and advertised on social media and media platforms, particularly popular with young people. Get rid of the TikTok and, you know, I'm telling you, it'll drastically reduce. I, I, I want to ban the TikToks and the Facebooks. You do? And the Instagrams. All the places that I don't use. I do have an Instagram. I just don't use it anymore. I, I, I tried really it? hard. I tried really hard for a relatively long amount of time to use Instagram as a vaping advocacy platform. It did not work out. People looked at the pictures, but not the words attached to the pictures. They hide them. Yeah. So yeah, they, they looked at the really cool pictures of vaping stuff that I posted because I had. I have some pretty nice gear. I would take pictures of nice gear and then say, hey, if you don't want this to go away, you need to get off your ass and do something. Well, people didn't read the, the words part. You know, they just, you know, they they, they looked at the uh, the pictures and were, oh, that's really nice, but that's about it. You know, they didn't actually, they didn't actually do anything, you know, positive with that information here let me let me just pull up my instagram for a minute it's been so long since i've been on my instagram yeah oh that's not my oh well, it is my instagram but it's not my profile here's my profile all right so here let me let me share this tab instead so this is my instagram so I would, you know, I would do things like this. I, this we had this guy on. He was running for office, and uh, this was like the last time I used. When this was a long time ago. How long ago was this? October tenth of twenty nineteen. So it's it's been a substantial amount of time. But you know, I, I'd make these really cool memes, or you know, Fig made this really cool meme. It's me at Ground Zero vaping. You know, make a really neat little, you know thing here wow 200 good 237 weeks ago you know or here this fda superimposed a regulatory scheme designed for a 20 a 19th century agricultural product on a 21st century technology product you know long long blocks of text over here that nobody nobody read the text over here they just looked at the pictures you know, or the, you know, this, I, I love this device. I wish I could get another one of these. Uh, it, 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 uh, it's shorted out now. It doesn't, it, I set it on the desk. I sit in here one day and I heard it firing all by itself. Oh, but good. I loved, I loved this device. It's from France. Vapor not, but oh, hella good. This was, this was an amazing banana flavor. If you, if you, you know, it's, this is one of Fig's uh, Feels Good Vapor products. Uh, yeah. Or this really cool Illuminati mech mod. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Yeah. Alongside my Castle Long Reserve number seven. Yep. Yeah. You make, you know. These really long FDA posts. Uh, FDA will consider whether it uh, would be appropriate to revisit the current policy that represents in these results in these products remaining on the market without a marketing order from the agency. This could mean requiring these brands to remove some or all of their flavored products that may be contributing to the rise of. So this was 287 weeks ago, and the FDA said, "Well, you know, we're going to let you be on the market, but." Some of you might have to remove. They didn't remove a single fucking product from the market. 
Just uh, disposables. Yeah, but this was back when the PMTA nonsense, you know. This is a this is an article I wrote for the magazine. Uh, one of the many articles that I wrote for the magazine. You know, so yeah, I tried to do all this vaping advocacy stuff on Instagram and nobody really wanted to hear it all. Squonker there. Yeah. Professor Glantz's version of grab them by the pussy. You can rape the vice chancellor's daughter and still have a job. Uh, No one would believe your lies about vaping now. So this is uh, him being sued for sexual harassment. I put, I I got the most uh, good, the best picture of him that I could find. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. What do you mean? Oh yeah, there is a squonker right there. It's right here. Yep. It's still on my desk right now. I have three squonkers. I have three squonkers right here. There's another one. Yep. So, yeah, I mean, this was, I I realized that this was not the best platform for this discussion because people didn't give a shit about vaping advocacy on Instagram. So I stopped going to Instagram. Yeah. We need to get Michelle a squonker. Speaking of, this was a really good fruity flavor. It was a, uh, called Heritage by Brickwells. They were a sponsor for us for a while, but this was a, a sweet mixed berries e-liquid. Sorry. Oh, this is uh, this is a me me uh, giving scaring the shit out of uh, Duncan Hunter, who was a congressman from California. Look, look at his face. He said... He, he had authored a bill that would have created a whole new regulatory structure for vaping because he was the vaping congressman. He was a freshman congressman who wrote a one-page bill that would create an entire new branch of FDA. And I said to him, I said, do you actually think as a freshman politician – that you're going to get any support for creating an entire new branch of the FDA. Where's your fucking head? You're an idiot. Yeah. And then he turned out that he was, you know, stealing campaign money and he stole money from a uh, wounded warrior and <clears throat> oh. used campaign funds to fly his, con- his family on vacation Bought a, an entire first uh, first class ticket for uh, his daughter's pet bunny to ride. Uh, his kids had access to the campaign money, uh, the campaign accounts, and were using it on Steam to buy video games. Like thousands of dollars worth of Steam purchases on the campaign. Uh, stole money from a veteran's charity. Uh and then, and then when he got caught, he said, and I quote, well, my wife handles all the finances. This is her fault. Oh. What a scumbag. Fucking threw his own wife under the bus. I was like, you're a piece of shit. And then I, and then that, that vaping attorney that I mentioned a while ago that, yeah, that, that shot the crossbow into his neighbor's house and lost his license to practice law twice um that guy told dimitri that i should be muzzled to silence him before because even though it's the truth we shouldn't tell everybody about the truth right yeah okay Governor. and then i said some i said something about ethics and he said ethics are ethics are important and i'm like you're a fucking attorney ethics aren't important if you'll screw, you screw one. If you're if you're willing to screw one person over, you will screw everyone over. Okay. Anywho, let's get back to this. Uh, there is mounting. Oh, I already read that. Our research aimed to uh, understand the industry professionals' perceptions of social media harms and potential management strategies using vaping as a case study. So they're, you know, they're they're trying to build a management program to control misinformation about vaping on social media. 
well, any information, but specifically in this case, this example, they're using uh, vaping as an odd thing. So there, the conclusion was there was consensus among participants that e-cigarette related social media content can be harmful and government action is urgently needed. That the government should take action um, and actively censor people who are saying positive things about vaping on social media. And they're going to get my channel. They're, they're going to get my channel. They're going to get my channel on YouTube canceled. That's what they're doing. There uh, mm -hmm. was an identified need for development of government-led national-level regulatory flame frameworks with government-led appropriate legislation identification of an organization or organizations with suitable levels of regulatory power and resources to monitor, enforce, and penalize non-compliant social media companies accompanied by increased community awareness, raising of harmful social media content, and improved digital literacy. So what they're saying is, is that the government should pass regulation laws, whatever, to limit people's ability to speak their opinion or spread science about vaping if it is a positive, if it shows vaping in a positive way. They should, they should be silenced, and the government should create regulations, laws, whatever, to make that a reality. It's so sad. It, I mean, as as somebody who is a lover of freedom and liberty, you know, I mean, the fucking show is called Son of Liberty Radio. Um, I, I in no way, shape, or form countenance any government uh, regulation of my speech. Yeah. At all. Not even nothing if my speech does not harm physically anyone if i somehow say something that's truthful and i don't lie on this show everything that we show on this show is proven here's the science we show the science here's an article we're just reading the article and expressing an opinion about the articles most of the time but we have science that backs up everything that we say empirically about the benefits of vaping. We have a scientific opinion that we can show. So how in the hell are they going to stop me from sharing proven science that is peer reviewed? Because it disagrees with the, uh, you know, the strategy, the story or whatever that they want to tell. This, this is starting to sound a lot like communist Russia or, uh, you know, the CCP. Yep. I mean, we should, Slowly, never, sure. we should never allow our representatives to agree to silence us. Never. Ever. Ever. Michelle, don't be so silent. <laughs> Well, normally I'm not. <laughs> you got to you got to interject. You got to you got to you know. You're a strong woman. You just going to have to push your way in. She's pretty loud. I see you on Twitter. I know that you can <laughs> that you can interject. I I know that. Well, you know. I've done a lot of that. <laughs> I'm kind of tired. I know that you can just barrel in there with Here's my opinion. <laughs> oh, y'all are in trouble now. <laughs> Come on now. Look, here, here, here. I'm going to play a video, and all you have to do is start talking, and I will pause it, I promise. Australia's vaping laws could soon be among the toughest in the world. The federal government introducing the next step in its crackdown, which would see only farmers allowed to sell vapes to those trying to quit smoking with a prescription. The smoke signals were there. Catherine Poole's already given notice on her lease and after eight and a half years in business, her store, Vape Your Way, will shut July 1. Pretty upset, let down. Um, we're trying to educate and uh, sell a law-abiding product. But the laws are changing. The Health Minister today introducing legislation. That guy's a dick. Can I, can I, I mean, do I have to have a scientific verifiable 
document that shows that that guy's a dick or is my opinion enough in this case? You can assume that he's a dick. Um, are, are there any Aussies uh, bastards in the chat room? Hey, can you confirm yeah. that this guy is a dick because you're, you know, you're in the same country. I just want to make sure that I, I don't, I, you know, I'm, I don't get my YouTube channel seems... canceled because the yellow, the girl in the yellow. No, the, the girl, girl in the, the other girl. Yeah. And the black, she, she doesn't look like she likes him either. <laughs> mm. Oh, bastard oh, confirms. Yeah. Bastard confirms that he is definitely a dick. Okay, I just want to make sure. Awesome. <laughs> I don't want to. I don't be spreading misinformation. I just want to, you know. Yeah. Making it illegal to sell vapes anywhere but pharmacies with a prescription. The government is not taking away the ability for patients to legitimately access vaping goods for smoking cessation and nicotine dependence. It's to make it harder for children to get their hands on the products, which are bright, sweet, dangerous, and right now, so easily accessible. We are seeing a growth in nicotine addiction in our young people. We are determined to stamp this public health menace out. It started with import bans earlier this year. Now, if the laws pass, convenience stores, servos, or organized crime gangs caught supplying could face up to six. Okay, so organized crime gangs. Now, can you see, like, just, just envision in your head a high speed police uh, chase in Australia? Where the 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 bobbies? No, that's that's not. They don't call them that. Uh, uh, where the the police, the, the popo, are chasing a van, uh, full of illegal vape, disposable vape products, and the back doors of the van open, and the criminal gangs, the crime gangs, hang out of the back of the vape, like Hollywood style, with with AR fifteens shooting the police car up on their way uh, to evade uh, helicopters flying overhead, you know, uh, dingoes running across the street, kangaroos running alongside the, you know, in a high speed uh, chase uh, across the outback uh, to get away from the cops, you know. Was this someone warrior, like Johnny Reeves or something? Road warrior style, you know. The the crime gangs that that you know the purple haired neck beard guys you know the the the, the criminal element of the vaping you know syndicate I, I'm gonna use that word now I'm gonna I'm gonna change the channel of the show to the vape syndicate. <laughs> Yeah, most of the crime gangs aren't selling kids. Now, hopefully, they're not selling kids. That's that's really wrong, bastard. Selling children is not good. Selling two kids is not as bad, but it's still bad. But selling kids in general is just not good. So just give them away. <laughs> Seven years jail or a two million dollar fine. And today we have a once in a generation. Did I hear a two million dollar fine? Did I? Did... Let's go back here. Thank you, did. Thank you did. I got to listen more clearly. Those or organized crime gangs caught supplying could face up to seven years jail or a two million dollar fine. Two million dollars, two point two million dollars, seven years in jail and two point two million dollars. Now, according to the article that we read earlier in the show, selling illegal tobacco is only a five year penalty. Selling illegal cigarettes is a Five year penalty. Five year penalty. Now, they didn't say they it didn't mention what the, 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 the monetary fine was in that article. Two point two million dollars. It's pitiful. Ridiculous. People for 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 you know being a criminal under a criminal syndicate that just wants to help people quit smoking. That's that is mm -hmm. that is outrageous. You wait until Sunday. Oh, I'm going to reiterate to all the people that were not here earlier. Sunday evening at the normal time that we're on, Sunday evening, we will have a special one-on-one -on -one episode with Dr. Colin Mendelson. Yay! My, my lights just flickered. 
You see my lights flicker? If I disappeared, the power went out. I can't, you know, I don't know what the fuck that was. And today we have a once in a generation opportunity to set things right. These would be among the toughest vaping laws in the world, but the federal government's yet to secure. No, no, they will be the toughest laws in the There's no $2.2 million fine. I know we're talking about Aussie dollars, but still that 2.2, even in Aussie, mil, you know, Aussie dollars is still, you know, like $10,000. You know. Yeah, at least a million. Cure the support needed to pass the Senate. Prohibition uh, has been proven not to work. And we should look to what has worked and cigarette regulations has. Minister Butler's backing his ban. If we could go back in time 100 years and do the same thing with cigarettes, I think we all would do it. Well, then do it fucking now. If you want to ban something, ban the fucking cigarettes. Let's see how let's yeah. see how the a vote on that goes when the Office of Business Management comes out and says, "Oh, by the way, if we do that, we're going to lose twelve billion dollars annually." Yeah, lovely Boris for ten years first. I mean, let's be clear: if you ban cigarettes, Australia's budget's going to go through the crapper because a huge chunk of their fucking monetary budget for the year comes out of fucking cigarettes. And we showed the statistics earlier as the usage of cigarettes goes down, the revenue of cigarette sales goes up because they just raised the tax to punish the smokers even more. Stephen says that 2.2 million. Now that's not right. I got to go over here. Aussie dollars, Aussie dollars. Well, two US dollars. So two point two million Aussie. Two point two million Aussie dollars is one point four three million US dollars. Don't even lie, Raj or Steve. You're a horrible mathematician. He Don't forgot a period. Forgot a point in there. Yeah, uh, it could be. Could be. Could be. Not 14, 1.4 million is actually accurate. Yeah. yeah. But I'm talking about Raj down there. Oh, 15 billion. Yeah. 15 yeah. billion is the annual revenue. Yeah, that's correct. $15 billion. You know, you know, uh, we forgot something. You know, Kevin, not Kevin, you have failed in your job. Uh oh. To remind me, to remind me that we have to do the uh, tweet or post of the week. Yes. You, you really, you, you, you really dropped the ball because this one, this one's, this is like a tear your heart out. Oh, situation. Boy. This is a fucking, this is the only tweet of the week. And it's, I, I don't, I don't have a sad video to play to introduce the, the sad, Treat tweet of the week or ex post of the week or whatever, but we're gonna play the normal one and then we'll you know. It's time for the vacast S of the week. Wow. So this this uh, this breaks my heart. I'm sure this breaks. Well, it breaks Mark and Bernie's hearts, but. Yeah. Oh, Mark man. announced this week that he's informing his clients that they're closing their store. Uh, it's been, they've been in business for 10 years. And he says, I want to thank my state and local governments, all the tobacco control and public health for their continued efforts to force us all back to smoking for their gain. You are truly a stain on humanity. You win. You forced me to close my small business, bankrupted me, destroyed my life, and left my community with no viable options to become and remain smoke free. I'm sure that I'll be able, or I'm not sure that I'll be able to advocate as I have for the past few years. So I just want to say to the vaping community, the independent vapor industry, and my fellow advocates that it has been an honor and you are all amazing human beings doing the right thing for the right reasons. And it was an honor to stand with you. Don't give up and don't let the bastards win. That just, that just brought tears to my face. I got a little for Clemp there for a minute. I'm, I really I'm, did. I just I, I, I'm forcing it back. I'm but this is this this is horrendous to me because Mark yeah. has been a friend 
He is a hero. He's been a fucking, you know, soldier that I stood in in the fucking foxholes and the trenches. We've, you know, battled. Uh, and this is really disappointing to me that uh, that he's not. I mean, it's not his fault. He can't stay in business. Um, it, this is just horrible. It was hard, you know. And all those but, people that depended on that shop, you know, yeah. I mean, what what did he say? It was 50 mile radius or 100 mile radius. Mm -hmm. And yeah. they would come in from way over, you know, way over yeah, that it, just it, to come. He had guys yeah. coming from outside of the country to buy right. shit from him. From right. you know, yeah. this and I mean, know this is it. it. It's just it. It is just heartbreaking. Heartbreaking that that he's having to do this. Um, and you know, we love him to death. He's a brother, and you know, but I saw this and I was like you know this just leaves i sent i sent a link to this tweet to kevin and the 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 text under it i just wrote fuck with exclamation marks this is this is just disturbingly sad and heartbreaking to me very sad that is the only tweet of the week this week because i just i i after that i was just i don't have any didn't have any uh, desire to go scrounging around twitter for more or X for more. Just five. So if if you follow Mark and Bruni, go and you know he's turned notification. He's turned like you can't comment on that. So you know, send him a message, retweet it, whatever. Let him know that he's loved. It's uh, it's it's had seventy five retweets already, but. You know, I think he's turned the messages off. He did. No, I'm talking about leave a message on his private message or oh, right, right, right. retweet it with, with, you know, we love uh, you, brother, or whatever. Or tweet it. Yeah. Yeah. Or as Kevin says, over tweet it. I'm not tweet. Kevin. Yeah. <laughs> you are not Kevin. That's what it says right there. No, it says Colorado. Oh. Kevin. So you are Kevin. You're just not that I Kevin. Think Kevin's in quotes. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, you got to do one of these. <laughs> well, Bruni had a stick. There you go. There you go. Bru no, I got to do this. Not, not Bruni. <laughs> Bruni. There you go. Addy had a stick. Addy had a stick. You you really need a pop filter. I bought him. I didn't. I didn't realize that pop filter was that big when I bought him that microphone and sent it to him. Because it came in a package deal. It had every, the stand, the microphone. It was a perfect thing because it had everything that he needed. Um, because he had, a, like, no microphone. So I, I got him that microphone, sent it to him. Um, and that fucking <laughs> pop filter is so big, you know. Uh, I, I, you know, tennis racket size. Why not? It's a tennis racket size. I can change your name. I can do that. You know that, right? I can. I can go over here and do that. I can. <laughs> I I can do that. Wait, right there's too much light. There's too much light. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hang on. Let me, let me, uh, oh. Here, I'll, I'll 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 add that there. Now Michelle is uh, not Kevin either. There. Oh, there See? you go. There you go. <laughs> yeah. All right, here. We got this one's a little bit longer, but we'll break it up. And if we get to a point where I don't want to talk anymore, we'll just not do this one. But here. Let, 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 let me show this one here. Share screen. This is the last of the vaping content. And after this, I'm gonna we're gonna go over to the the rumbles. The rumbles. The rumbles. And I only have three pieces to talk about on the rumbles tonight. So, Smoke-free Sunak's plan to ban our kids buying cigarettes starts its journey. It's a law today that tobacco and vapes bill means anyone turning 15 this year or younger will never legally be sold to fags. So this already pisses me off because they're saying anybody that is younger than 15 this year will never be able to buy 
a cigarette or a vape. So regardless of whether or not at some point in the future you are 50 years old and a grown-ass adult person in the UK, you will never be able to make the choice to buy whatever the fuck you want with your own money. Nope. Regardless of whether you I like cigarettes to. or not, whether I or not I believe that people should smoke cigarettes or not, they have the right, as far as I'm concerned, to do whatever the fuck they want with their body. Now, these are the same people that argue body autonomy and be able to do whatever I want with my body as long as it's the murder of a baby. That's fine. You can do that. We're going to fight for your right to do that to your body or to the baby's body. But God forbid you want to smoke a cigarette. Oh, how dare you? Never. We're never going to allow you to do that to your body. Or you can always go to your 80-year-old parent and say, I need cigarettes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're, you're 50, 50 you you're know. a 50-year-old person. You're you're gonna be standing in line outside of the convenience store. Hey, here comes a here comes yeah. a senior citizen. Here comes a 90-year-old guy. Hey, can you go in and buy me a pack of cigarettes? Because I'm yeah. 50 and I'm they're not gonna let me have it. Because no. I was born after 2009. But you can go in and drink. Yeah. Or you can go in and, you know. Anything else that you want to do when you're right. 50 years old, you you have, you know, you're 50. You can do whatever the fuck you want, but not this. That seems ridiculous to me. Giving us some of the toughest anti-tobacco laws in the entire world. The bill will also try to concern children of vaping as well, bringing in new powers vape flavors and packaging potential. Do you want to be now? I spoke for the UK Vaping Industry Association, Dr. Marina Murphy. So the Marina, head of the US the kind of or the, the UK Vaping Industry Support Group or whatever is a doctor. Now, why can't we have a fucking doctor? Where and who? Huh? Is our FDA leader? No, no. This is the woman that's in charge. That that's the spokesperson. For the pro vaping organization in in the well, UK, she, she's a doctor. We do have a doctor, it's Dr. Colin Mendelson. He's in Australia. I know, but he's still a world in, voice in America. The head of our vaping associations should be a fucking medical doctor. True. Not. I'm not getting ugly here. I'm not. I'm not some person that just loves to vape. That has no credential. We should have a professional person at the top that is a medical doctor who can argue the medicine. You know, at one point I had suggested that we build an army of expert doc, like doctors, doctors of public health, that would be on a list. And if you had, uh, if you were fighting a bill. We would, we would have reached out to all these people and said, hey, would you be willing to Zoom? Because all, all this stuff is on Zoom now. Like my wife was supposed to be deposed in a lawsuit the other day. It was done on Zoom. So she didn't have to go to the courtroom. She didn't have to do any of that. It's all on Zoom now. Why couldn't we have, you know, Dr. Paul Newhouse on a list or Michael Siegel or all these guys that we know are our buddies, why couldn't we just say to them in advance, hey, by the way, we're fighting a bill in Florida. Could we put you on the list? Would you be available? And just that keep a long nice. list and just go down the chain. Are you available? Are you available? Oh, you're available. Okay, so let's put you on the list. Nobody's done that. After I suggest, I mean, I, I'm not doing, I mean, I'm not anybody. I'm a nobody. I'm not a, president of a vaping association or any of that but why wouldn't we have because i can call a bunch of these guys and say hey you want to be on my show and a bunch right. of them some of them not all of them a bunch of them say oh sure you know charlie you want to be on the show? sure okay colin mendelson you want to come up? okay they're available and they're approachable the a good right. number of them are Do dr glover do you want do you want to come on the show okay all right, so yes, right, these are all people that are willing 
And a lot of times I see testimony and it's people that have no credibility. And, I, you know, these are people that own vape businesses. Regular Joes like you and me that vape. Our testimony is worthless, really. As much as our stories are important, and I'm not saying they're not important, but in a courtroom situation, in a you know, in a legislative situation, somebody with a bunch of credentials after their name always is going to be more weighty, right? Than Joe Blow, who is very passionate about vaping, who is a good person, is an amazing person, has a great story. Politicians, I've I've been in the fucking meeting rooms. They tend to say, well. Those anecdotal stories don't really, you know, but you bring a fucking doctor who's a, you know, particle physicist who has done papers on the exhalation of vapor to show that it doesn't float around and stick to the air. It, you know, Roberto Sussman wrote a story about how the our emissions flow downwards to prove that mm -hmm. we're not spreading diseases and, you know. So he's a smart guy, right? And he's also approachable. He's been on right. my show. Like, if he'll come talk to a bunch of chuckleheads, mm -hmm. if his calendar's not full, I'm sure he would get on a Zoom. Yeah, I already said Charlie. Charlie, will, Charlie's always available. You know, but we should build a list. Hey, uh, you know, Dr. Farsalinos, are you available at this time? You know, can you can you possibly get into a Zoom meeting and testify? You know, that's what we need is a fucking, you know, murderer's row of hard hitting, good, well-spoken expert people, smart people that have credentials. Nobody's bothered to put that list together, though. I mean, I just named a whole bunch of people that have been on my show. That I should I'm sure if I if they were set, if you know, they were approached and hey, uh. You know, can you testify? It'll be at this time on this day. Are you available? But yeah, I'm just wondering. Graham, nice to see you. Um, it's all a bit confusing, this this uh, this bill, because it seems to me that Rishi Sunak saw what they were doing in, in New Zealand, which I think was originally brought in by... And I think they've now backed away from it, and they're not sort of doing it anymore, because it's kind of mad, isn't it, to say to somebody who's born in 2009, you will always have to ask somebody else to get cigarettes for you. <laughs> 50 years old. Yeah, well, I mean, what you say is correct. They did originally conceive of... That was the exact example that we just said. 50 years old. Asking an 80-year-old to go buy a cigarette. Of this type yeah. of policy in New Zealand. But as you say, they've decided that... Um, it was problematic and implemented, not least because it's like market. Right. Um, and again, you also make a good point about the so-called objective being to prevent children from smoking. But, mm. but this, you know, and it's a prohibition, so let's just call it a prohibition. Yeah. This prohibition doesn't stop any child from smoking. It will only ever stop adults. Right. So it, in my in my view, it's not. Now, I, I will. They at least got a, a redheaded Irish woman to represent the UK vaping industry i just thought that that was kind of funny mm -hmm. so, i don't know if y'all picked up on the accent but I, I definitely did she sounds like my relatives it's going to do what it's what it's supposedly intended to do it, no. it will only i think impinge on the freedom of adults yes ultimately because a lot of people have said today when i've been hearing the various arguments being made is that you know as long as cigarettes are legal as long as tobacco is a legal substance you know, what, what, what exactly right have you got to ban it? You know, because they've banned drugs, haven't they? But, you know, apparently Britain is now the cocaine capital of Europe. So, you know, there's not any... Woo! Bolivian marching powder right on the streets in the UK. All right. Oh, yeah. In fact, I think I read a story the other week saying that you can get cocaine delivered to your house faster than the pizza now. So, I mean, you know, outlawing things doesn't really work, does it? Well, and you're either an adult or you're not an adult. Mm. I mean, there shouldn't be degrees of adulthood. Right. It should be the case that if a product is legal, you should be able to have it. Mm. And also, I think um, it's kind of a pointless policy when you think about it, because the market is actually doing what 
they say that this policy will do. The market is pushing cigarettes out. I mean, mm. at the moment, I think we have the lowest level of smoking that we've ever had in this country, and we have the highest level of quitting. Right. And e-cigarettes have been really important, if not the most important, quit aid in this country. So the market is already doing that. Mm. Is so, it also a case of, um, you know, because cigarettes are so expensive, largely because of the tax that, that is collected on them, mm. that people are taking cheaper options, for example, whether it's vaping or whether it's actually e-cigarettes or whether it's just buying, like you say, black market cigarettes. I mean, I, I used to smoke up until about, you know, seven or eight years ago, and I used to know loads of people who would go down to certain shops in certain parts of London and buy packs of cigarettes for four quid. You know, I never did it because I didn't really fancy doing it, but, you know, I assume that that's still a, a burgeoning market and nobody really knows how many people are they're using it, right? Well, the price point has always been really important. And, I mean, most of the people who smoke, you know, are not the most wealthy people in the country, right. we'll say. And in order to help somebody like that to move from a product and a behaviour that they understand mm. to something that they don't necessarily understand, I, I think you have to offer them an option that's cheaper in addition to being convenient. Right. So, again, she reiterates that smoking prevalence is higher in lower income situations. Uh the, the the stat also says that people in lower educational you know areas where where education is not a priority that's also an area where smoking occurs more frequently um as in the UK as well as here i guess is you know the point is that i don't want to say dumber people but people that are not educated as much people i mean people that have money they're going to paying more for a product is not going to punish them. You're talking but it, not it, the elite. <laughs> you know, they're going to smoke cigars, which are never going to be, you know, premium cigars are protected worldwide. Yep. You know, that's for the fat cats. That's for the people with money. Uh, smoking a cigarette, on the other hand, is for the lower class, the working class, the, the Joes. You know, I don't know. They don't have, you know, regular Joes. They they probably have a different term over there. But the regular Joes. Uh, and those are the people that, a, you know, a, a tax on cigarettes is going to affect more directly than the rich guys. So that, I mean, that that's, that's an, a universal truth. And accessible, and that they like as well. And what about the vaping industry? What does this do to the vaping industry, if anything? Well, this bill, um, you know, obviously everybody's been waiting on tender hooks to see what's in the bill, but the bill doesn't actually prescribe any specific measures. But what it does do, and what I think is quite worrying, is it gives sweeping powers to the Secret Secretary of State, or I suppose more correctly, her civil servants. Mm which means that ultimately they can do what they want down the line with very little scrutiny. And the other thing that I think is problematic about this bill is the, the sort of indecent haste. You know, we've been waiting, yes. everybody's been waiting. And then you have the first reading today. And in the normal scheme of things, you would have a couple of weeks. I mean, right. people need to be able to read this bill, understand it, it was published today. Mm. And so they're going to have a second reading, as I understand it, um, tomorrow. Right. So that seems to me to be... That's what they do here, though. They sneak in the reading, the first reading, second reading and then move it out of committee and vote on it really fucking quickly so that nobody with a dissenting opinion has time to intervene Rebut. and speak. Yep. So, I mean, it's the same tactics that they use here. Um, mm -hmm. Oh, you didn't, you didn't realize that we did the second reading and didn't tell anybody? Oh, we did it. And, uh, you know, it passed out of committee. It's on the floor. Oh, they voted it. Okay, it's already law. You know. Mm -hmm. that's that's how they do it so it feels like they're rushing it through they go, absolutely yeah. and i mean rushed legislation can never be good legislation no also it seems a bit odd given all the problems that britain's got right now that oh and that's the same thing that we do for our omnibus funding bill is they introduce a uh you know a bill that's like ten thousand pages and oh we're going to introduce it and vote on it tomorrow no but nobody can read that fucking bill but that's the that's the yearly funding bill. That's what they're doing right now. They're pushing this omnibus package through with our budget, the budget for what we're going to give to the Ukraine 
how much money we're giving to Israel, how much money we're giving to about, you know, I, I broke, I, I, I said the story. I, we read a story a, a while back when the, the, like the second round of funding for the Ukraine and Israel over this three year long battle war thing that we've been, that we've been secretly funding, not secretly that we've been openly funding this proxy, these proxy wars, um, where you start reading and you start looking at all the line items and you realize that not only are we giving Israel money, but we're giving almost as much to Palestine. So we're funding both sides. Now we give Israel, say we give Israel, I'm just making a number up here, $50 million. Well, we're giving $25 million to Palestine, but it's way down the list that you don't even know. So, why are we funding? But I mean, are we not picking the side? I mean, shouldn't I mean, if we were only giving money to one side, would that not shorten the length of this situation? When have we ever played just one side? Are, are we are we are we purposefully giving money to both sides to keep it going longer? I mean, somebody, you know, I know we're not giving money to Russia. And we're giving money to the Ukraine. So at least we're not paying both sides of that. We're buying bullets for both guys, uh, for both countries shooting at each other mm -hmm. yeah. in Israel, in the Holy Land. I mean, we're literally, because if you actually think that Hamas is going to take that fictional 25 million, I don't remember what the exact amount was, but say 25 million, we're, we're giving them 25. Do you actually think that they're actually buying food and water with that $25 million for the people of Palestine? No. No. They're buying bullets. They're buying rockets. They're buying whatever they can off the black market to throw over that, you know, fence, whatever, you know, yeah. the wall or whatever you want to call it in Israel. So... Seriously, if if we had any intent on that thing ending, you would think that we would just say, okay, what you know what? Here, Israel, here's seventy five million dollars. We won't give any money to Palestine. End it. It's it's you know, if if we give you seventy five million dollars, we just agree to disagree and you know, go your own ways. Make Egypt open the fucking border between Palestine and Egypt so that aid can come that direction. Build some pipes to drink, to take water from Egypt into Palestine so that, you know, here's some, you know what, build a road, have some pipes for water. Oh, run some electric wire from Egypt into Palestine so that they, you know, $25 million. You know what? Here's an in, here's a, a, a power plant. You can have your own power plant. Here's your own water processing plant. So you you know no nobody can say that Israel is starving or you know preventing Palestine from having water. Run the pipes from Egypt. You know what? They're they're your same they're your same religion. They should. But you know what? Egypt Egypt hasn't opened that border. Mm -hmm. No. Nope. So, why? Why is Syria, which is also right there, why aren't they opening up, the, you know, power lines and opening up water supplies into Palestine from Syria? Because Syria was part of the original land that the Brits were given control over to give Israel their own country. The the remember the League of Nations back in old timey days before the UN, right. the League of Nations was gave Britain the control of that entire area to build a holy or a, a home a home a home country for the Israels in their the you know the Jews in their uh, you know ancestral home. And the Brits took a big chunk of it and gave it gave it to the Assyrians, the Assyrian people, and said, "This is Syria, this is your land now." They created that country, and then the land that was left over. And this is from nineteen twenty something. This is 
the land that was left over was given to the 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 Jews. There were some people that live that lived there that called themselves Palestinian, ethnically, they're Semitic people, all of them, but they're not Jews. But they're the same people. I mean, sem sem so you know what? They they got the same genetics. I mean, they just speak different languages. They worship different people, but. You break it down; they're the same people, right? If you took a if you took a Jewish man from a, a Semitic Jewish man and a Semitic Palestinian man and took off their clothes so that they were put put them in the same outfit, you wouldn't be able to tell which was the Jew and which one was the Palestinian because they're from the same DNA, they're from the same stock. And here we are, but we're fucking buying bullets for both of them. I just thought that was weird. That was a weird tangent. Sorry, guys. Hmm. This is the one thing they want to focus on, and they want to sort of, you know, put their market down and say, exactly. this is what we did. We stopped people smoking in Britain. Well, exactly. so what? I mean, it's almost a distraction tactics, I would say. I mean, look what's going on with Rwanda. Yeah. Um, and, you know, and I, th I think they're basically sacrificing vapors for votes yeah because i mean they've made a big bang about it they you know talking it in the media mm. and big enough they're sacrificing vapors for votes hmm i've heard something something similar to that here yep yeah absolutely yeah this is a very smart woman i i like her already other than the fact that she's a redhead and she's from ireland you know in in our case so it's 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 also they're sacrificing lives for votes. Uh, it, it, it's the same thing over there too. I mean, right, right, exactly. Yeah, they're, I mean, it's really the smokers that are the ones that are getting fucked because, mm -hmm. at you know, you remove options for them. At I, I truly believe. I'm, I'm going to remove this. I truly believe that at some point in the future, if, if the the messaging was correct and we, we let people know the truth that yes vaping is safer than smoking it's not a hundred percent harmless don't you know we don't ever want it, people to know we don't ever want people to think that's what we're saying it is substantially orders of magnitude safer and it will help you get off the thing that we know will kill you at some point it will it will shorten your life you know, there are people that can smoke for 70 years and not have any ill effects other than a cough. Never get lung cancer, never get anything, you know, live to be 90. And then there are other people that smoke for 10 years and get lung cancer. Now, yep. would that 90-year-old possibly have lived to be 110 without smoking? Po could possibly. True. Sure. Maybe. But I, I don't know that I want to live past 90, to tell you the truth. But at some point, those people that smoke, if they were told the truth, if the government would just say, you know what, we were wrong this whole time, we've been lying to you, and they would never say we've been lying to you. We've been incorrect in our messaging. Vaping is safer than smoking. It has helped a lot of people quit smoking. If you can't give up smoking in a normal way, you should really try vaping because it has helped a lot of people. We would save a lot of fucking smokers. But no. Now, I mean, obviously the, the messaging is, oh, vaping bad. It destroys your brain. You're going to get brain worms. Oh, you get brain cancer. Oh, you can, you know, it's going to shrink your testicles, whatever. People are afraid of it. We've been chasing smokers. Well, people that can't quit, they're going to keep smoking. Chasing them away. Yeah. So yep. if they would just if they would just tell the truth and say, yeah, no, it's it's not harmless, but it, it, it's helped millions of people. You know, if you got to have a bad habit, at least take the least harmful habit. Yeah, they're not willing to do that. No, they're never going to do that. Not not so, without a wand, you know. Well, not unless they're forced to. And even then they're going to do it kicking and screaming. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, Michelle and Kevin. Yes. Not Kevin. The, the not Kevins. Um, we're, 
we're going to we're going to say goodbye to the people in YouTube now. And if you choose to do so, you can hang out. You can still stay. I'm not kicking you out because, you know, it's good to have you on. And Kevin is going to be so mad that Michelle came on and he wasn't here. <laughs> well, you know, he's he's missed quite a few really good guests. <laughs> there's there's I've done some really mean things when Colin Mendelson was on the show the last time Kevin wasn't here. Yeah. So, uh, well, thanks and, for having me, guys. I appreciate it. I've had fun. You're welcome. You're welcome. We're gonna go. Meet you. We're gonna we're gonna go to the Rumble. We have a story about immigrants and guns. We have a story about Gen X, uh, 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 Gen X parents being the cause of the whininess of millennials and Gen Zs. Um, and then we're gonna talk about a California bill. Uh, um, a miracle California bill that's throwing a lot of money at mental health um, because the last bill that they passed that supposedly was going to help homeless people with mental health just gave the cops more authority to arrest homeless people and put them in the in, in already stretched to the limit uh, mental health facilities. So we're going to have that talk too. So if you want to hang out, you can still hang out. We're going to take a short break. I'm going to shut off all the other shit, and we're going to come back, and we'll be only on Rumble in just a few minutes. Bye, guys. Every, everybody, that, that, let me move my mouse over here so that I can I can play the, the, the video here. Now, 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 now we're ready. Okay, <laughs> ready, ready. Bye, guys. Let me do that. No, I don't want to do that one. Let's do this one. But, you know, then you've got people on the other side saying, well, but experts disagree, which is a kind of typical merchants of doubt tactic. And the same will be uh, the same will be said for nicotine benefits, interest syndrome, ADHD, autism, bipolar disorder, schizophrenia, et cetera, et cetera. In fact, in fact a lot of research it is looking at at cross sectional studies that find associations and trying to claim that nicotine causes those things. <laughs> they want to when keep when it all the says that people with those things are using nicotine because it helps them, but so we're going to face that. But I mean, one of the ways to deal with this is to get people to tell their personal stories. I should be the last one to ask anyone to do that. Why? Because an adult living with ADHD is already stigmatized.